And now. And now. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado on this Moon Tower week, let's get started. Mornings with Matt and Bob, powered by Chewy. What can I say? Today's starting lineup, the man straight ahead, the hardest working man in show business, the heavyweight champ in every aspect of his life. And ladies and gentlemen, it's a Sears catalog of, of many aspects, many loves, many passions, not the least of which is doing radio and being our producer. Shoe head, food head, he loves a good taco, ladies and gentlemen. I don't mean that in a, any kind of racially loaded way. Mm. He just loves tacos. I think we all do. I had some good ones yesterday. Did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Jew Boy Cantina. Oh, my. Oh, my. Well, we'll hear about that, I'm sure. Ladies and gentlemen, he takes your phone calls, so don't hesitate to call. Keeps the level straight, puts up the podcast, and spanks the interns when they misbehave. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the incomparable Mr. Chewy Eldorado. Thank you. Well, now, ladies like and gentlemen, it. suiting up, getting his jersey on. He's the man to my right. The man with the plan, ladies and gentlemen. Our connection to comedy. That's right. That's right. He's a former stand-up comic. Well, I say, for, can they ever take that away from you? I don't think so. Uh-huh. I mean, why not? Uh-huh. You know? Was OJ a former football player? No. Uh-huh. Was he a former murderer? Well, perhaps. I don't know. He, uh... Is a former star of episodic no. television, ladies and gentlemen. I know. Mama's I know. family? I know. No. What's happening? No. He was rerun. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, what can I say? He's Austin's greatest living storyteller. He's playing a little bit hurt today, but you know what? Right. He sees those. He's, when he, You know what? He Matt, said, if, you see what? That, if you see that single pair of footprints in the sand... That means that I was carrying you. Oh, okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. You understand that? I do. I'm doing that over the shoulder. Fireman's carry. Th- I, anyway, thank you. We're going to lift I'm, him up to where he belongs, ladies and I'm gentlemen. I'm picking your pocket while you're doing that. The marvelous Mr. Matt Bearden is here. Thank you, oh gentlemen. Hello. Let's see what he's wearing today. Oh, yep. He's got one of his uh, one-off shirts. He, the man has an entire closet full of collectibles. Uh, Artistically designed shirts that only he owns. This which one's I think AI is, uh, designed. Pretty cool. Yeah. United States of Analog, which yeah. if you haven't already checked in on, you probably should. It's his own YouTube series where he explores the world of analog hi fi. Of course, on top of his hat, very shiny lid. It is exactly just a little over a year old from the hand built motorcycle yeah, show. It's getting a little sweaty. And just because uh, he's cool doesn't mean he doesn't love comfort. Hoka's on his feet, ladies. Nurses. Got that neuropathy, you he's know. Sti- gotta- he's sticking with you nurses, and he's showing a little uh, solidarity. Throwing on them hokas this morning. He's a member of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, and he's created uh, pretty much uh, everything that we do here. Very strong that way. Just do me a favor, ladies and gentlemen, and put your hands together uh, the way he does every single day. To take care of us, or around our necks. It's Mr. Bob Fonseca. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, man. I, you know, I don't hate the Hocus. I you don't. know who else wears them in the building that uh, I found out the who, other night? Who? Ed Clements. Does he? You and Ed. You have to get the right ones, I found, though. They but, have different... Um, they have different... They Some supinate, some pronate. I have to wear the Bondies. I don't even know if these are Bondies. But I was complimenting him. I was, like, in the kitchen. I was like, hey, Ed, oh, those are cool Hocus. Um, and then right at that moment, Jeff Ward was walking around the corner and started busting out laughing. So I don't know if they have a, a bit about his hocus. Somehow, These are gaviotas. I'm supposed to wear bondies, but they're expensive. Hmm. They're like 130 a pop. I don't know yeah. why, because they supinate, I think, or I supinate, and then they do the opposite. Anyway, they look. Anyway, I need to get my shoes are very technical. Where do I go to do that? Huh? Don't you find out if you supinate or you're pigeon toed or something? Uh, go to a good. I oh, used to used to be able to go to Runtex and they'd check you out. You'd walk back and forth. What's that great place on Burnett? Caravel Shoes. Maybe What's Caravel that place called? Knows. Are they, they still Caravel? around? DSW does it. Nah, Caravel still open. You, dude, you can't go. Look, no. It's hard to find a good shoe place anymore. I want to start running. To be, every, I don't want my back and knees to just go out. Right. And that's why you should get the right. I think my foot comes down like on the outside of the foot. And so I need a shoe that kind of tilts it back in. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I think I got that. I got something. 
If you'll walk, if you'll walk for me, take your pants off. My feet are not. Take your pants right. off and walk down. I don't here, have, I'm not here. wearing any pants. No, come over here and then right. walk down the hall, and I'll take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, thank please, you. Please stand by. We're doing a little medical uh, emergency uh, checkup here. Uh, oh, there he goes. You don't even have to put your pants back on. I can, I can just look at how the bottom of your shoe wears, and I'll tell you. Oh, so you got him to take his pants off first, and you could have just told. All right, now drop, the... drop your pants and cough. Turn your head and cough. How's that feel? I thought you were going to give me a real diagnosis. <coughs> yes, he gave, he's going to give you a diagnosis. So am I prolapsed or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Comedy. <laughs> Theater of the mind, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, they always used to teach us that. No, can I say something In to radio you radio school. Can I say something to you both? Theater of the mind would have been you guys acting that out while still standing here. I said I you genuinely guys literally thought he was went. There. You guys literally went to the hall and did all of that. That's not theater of the mind. You you absolutely left the studio look, to do me that. Me and Alex are the same. All right, we're gonna we're gonna react. We're gonna. I think you supinate. That's I my, thought he was gonna give diagnosis. me a real diagnosis. I, that's my diagnosis. I thought he get, could tell. Get a second opinion. I can't tell when he's being when he's real about something he's get good at second, or not. Get. Uh, <laughs> I'm not good at anything. Get uh, get a second opinion. But I know why doesn't Runtex exist anymore, or do they? Uh, no, they went away. You don't remember that, Mister Senor Runtex had a bit of an issue. You oh. don't remember that? No. Oh. Anyway, he got in trouble for something. I don't remember what it was. They it was were a good store back in the day. But... Finances or out of something. All right. Um, uh, they well, used to check you out. Y'all know like where that. where to get my feet done at then. Yeah, your feet did. Let me know. Okay. You're gonna get some. Are you gonna get some hocus? I was I was thinking about it because sometimes Ross will have the pair for like really cheap. Uh, that are originally one eighty. Dude, they got a bunch it over at the. They've had a bunch lately lately over at the rack. Not so many New Balance, but uh, Paul a lot who of Paul who ran Runtex. Who was uh, I didn't know him personally, but I mean he did the show back in the day. He was quite pretty often. visionary when it comes to the city because there was no hike and bike trail like the we know now. Right. He kind of helped create it with a lot he of other people. He put those water stations up. He put the water up. stations everywhere because the city didn't have it. Anyway, uh, in 2013, Run Texas forced to close when it came to light that Paul was hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, which is very easy. Well, there's happen. not much margin in shoes. There's not. You know? He wasn't, gotta, a, he wasn't able to pay his vendors. He was also behind on rent and taxes. So, okay. I, you know, I think he tried to expand a little bit, and that can always be difficult. And uh, and so then it uh, it got aided up. Mm. Oh man! And even so, even things oh, that man. are even things you see as being cornerstones uh, of of the city. All right, you know. Mm. Okay. All right. Well. Do we have uh, internet in here today? We should. We got a bunch of. Uh, I mean, just, when I say that, I guess that's what I mean. I'm, I'm hey, getting stuff. I mean. I, I'm on the internet. It won't load right now. Oh. I don't know if I should restart my computer. I see that we have a bunch of uh, Ronnie breaking. Chang tickets to give away today. So, like five pair. Yeah. Well, so what we happened? I thought that. we gave them away yesterday. We gave one away. Why just I mean, one? Only one call. No, I think maybe we gave three away. Anyway, this this. Yeah, this is from a few minutes ago. Todd, excuse me, Johnny Rude sent me sent us an email. What's it say? Five pair, he said. Oh, okay. So I don't know. Awesome. I don't know if we have to deduct the ones we did yesterday or what, or just follow, you know, just whatever. You'll find when, it. When is the Ronnie Chang show? That's a good question, Matt. I think it might, maybe this weekend? They're, they're, yeah, they're wanting the list already, so. Well, then that means it's tonight. It might be. Well, no, no. Anyway, this is not I'm, what I'm, I'm checking asking. out. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Right. I didn't right. mean that to do business. We could have done like this during the commercials. I, I, uh, he says, uh, Johnny Rude says he'll stop by uh, sometime this morning. Uh, so I guess now we got to clean the place up. Great. Start cleaning. Uh, it is the 20th. It's Saturday. Now we got Why do they want that list already? What's the, what, what their deal is? People want to be prepared. Well, the, well, maybe he wants to take some time off. Do you know how many times I've shown up to that venue and I haven't been able to get my tickets and had to go through a whole rigmarole? Most of the time. There so why time. now suddenly they want to be prepared? All right. I mean, we are. Yeah, I think we're on schedule. We just missed Monday. That's I think it. we're good. But we're good. Sorry, I brought it up. So. Forget I brought it up. No, we'll have to do a Ronald Chang. No, it's not Ronald. I mean, that would Ronnie. be different. That's a di- Ronnie. Ronnie. Ronnie Chang. Yeah, Ronald Chang is someone we know here. 
Ronnie, Ronnie Chang, which is see, see the the slight difference of pronunciation. One's between, more professional. That's why he went by Ronald McDonald. There's Chang and then there's Chang. They're not the same. Hear it, Chang, Chang. Chang. Yeah, I don't hear it either. What do you, you? want me to? <laughs> what do you want me? Well, to I'm say? looking at the different spellings and then saying them, but it comes out the same, doesn't it? I hate being from Texas. Me too. I mean, I love it, but I hate the brain it's created. A uh, special guest today, uh, later this morning, James Adomian. Did James was James on air with us? I, I, I'm, I'm almost positive Man, James was on air with us uh, I, prior to COVID. Maybe I don't remember. We should have had a history. We should have. At some point in our career, hired a historian. Yeah, you know, uh, James is uh, an archivist. You, you may not know it, but you've probably seen him on television. I mean, he's done voices for pretty much everything on Adult Swim, uh, Children's Hospital, Metalocalypse. Uh, he does so many voices, and the great thing is, he does what? voices of a bunch of people that you would never think anybody okay. would ever do voices for. But I know him. You probably do. He did this whole long special too. Because remember when? Uh, Jesse Ventura was running for president. How could I forget? That was my favorite era. Okay, James does the best Jesse Ventura impression <laughs> you've ever heard, and he would dress as him, and he would go places as Jesse Ventura, dressed as Jesse Ventura, and do all the stuff. Is that where it all kind of like started to go a little haywire? Because I remember he had Alex Jones on. Yeah, I mean, started to go haywire. I, mean, had- I don't. I'm looking at his picture, and I don't. You won't oh, recognize it? James because I've never seen James on stage as James. He dresses as some like different character every time. He is hmm. He's a good? chameleon and what's fun about him too is that like if you're someone who's like likes like say you're going to a thing like this, the Moon Tower where there's going to be tons and tons of stand up mm-hmm. yeah. and you go that's been a lot of stand up over the last 2 days. I need a break from stand up. You can hop in and go see James, and you're still seeing comedy, But and you'll go, I think this is the... I don't know what I'm watching. It's... You remember the kid who... I, I think... We'll probably ask him when he gets in here. I think he may have the world's worst untreated ADD, or AD, AD, AD mm, and HD. That's good, though. That works in... Uh, it works great. You know, media and comedy, I guess. I saw him do a thing one time where he was dressed as Jesse Ventura. And he was debating the actual Jesse Ventura, and it, it was amazing. Jesse, oh. is, is Jesse sometimes dead? he looks like a, huh? Sometimes he looks like what? Like a middle-aged man, and then sometimes he looks like a really young guy. So are they just are these the pictures over the years, or what? Uh, I think we could say that about everybody. 1980. So he's got to be 44. That's not really. Jesse should run again. He's almost. Is he the, the guy age that does Robin can. Williams? No. That's no, I don't think he does either. Like, no, this he the, the thing is he's he's not an impression. I don't want to call him an impressionist. He is a uh, he embodies these people and he puts them into shows. It's hard to explain. Huh. It's it's really really. Right, cool. We'll like see it. which guy we get today then. Yeah, right. He's very energetic. He's very fun. He's uh, whip smart. You know what? I may stick around for that. Okay, you That's should. Great. Huh? Great. You should. Yeah, I think it's a good. I, I like be here for the whole show today. Be a treat. I liked it. I liked the attitude of the. Thank you. You would consider you would consider sticking around for that at least. Thank you. Uh, so I guess the announcement then would be uh, we've got a lot of stuff happening with Moon, Moon Tower. Tower's we've got, happening. We've it's got on. tickets, and if you thought you were going to win them tomorrow or the next day, you're not because we apparently they need the list today, urgently. So I hope you'll keep tuned in, and we'll give them my how many more pair we got? Five, four. Four pair. And we got to get these to you. We got to get them out the door, ladies and gentlemen. Get them out the door. Folks, please go nowhere. We're just for 60 seconds. Uh, our friend Bob Fonseca is going to tell you about QC Kinetics. Uh, and then we will get yeah. to click, click, booming. Right, Bob? That's right. And today's click, click, boom. Well, stand very, by, Matt. Very, very good. Click, click. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm still waiting for click, click, boom to load. Oh, no. Which, no. The, both clicks? and Has one click downloaded? No, neither. My uh, For some reason, the uh, the service that I use to put all of my stories in or whatever oh, is... Oh, your uh, VPN? The virus has finally not, got them, I think, from the click booms. You guys can make light of it. It's got me greatly concerned. Mm. Uh, I'm going right to find a back way into this. But what we're supposed to be going on to is our, our remembrance this week. If you remember, we've been uh, the things that will make us a boomer is if we oh. know them. Remember? Right. We did Chewy yesterday. We did. I know we were going to do them yeah. in a series yeah. of based on the characters on the show. Let's see if I could go to history. I bet, that, I bet I could do that. I bet I could go to history from yesterday. Chewy's Gen X, right? Mm. <laughs> 
Is that right? Chewy, I think, is a millennial, right? I like he. I like he think he likes to think he is and act like he is, but I think he's Gen X. Eighty-seven. Oh yeah, you're Gen X. Mm-hmm. Is that Gen X? I could be Boomer. Have y'all checked? No, no. I think I think eighty-seven. I was millennial a little bit later. No, are you one of those what they call a zennial? I don't know. You're you're, you're an in betweener. I think you are an in betweener. Sorry, dude. Sorry to, to bring that up and put that in your face. You don't have a place in our hearts. So, uh, oh, look at that. Look at that. I said that, and then it loaded finally. Okay, now we're on our way, ladies and gentlemen. We Hey, uh, we apologize for the technical difficulties. We should have just played one of those things that goes beep, and at this station is uh, experiencing technical difficulties. We'll be back. 81 to 96 are millennials. Gen 81? Z, Gen Z, 97 to 2012. Gen X, 65 to 80. Dang, dude. Those are not where at all where I thought the dates were. So you are a millennial. Boom, Congratulations. 55 to 64. To 64? Wait a minute, what? Boomers, 55 to 64. What was before that? The greatest generation? That's right. Mm-hmm. God, they were great. They it was, really were I just amazing. got in on that they really one. were. I barely got in. Uh, here we go. Uh, should it be for me or should it be for Bob? Today? Whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm down. You're down? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see how he answers these. Now, here's the thing. Bob is actually in boomer camp, so you should probably have done all of these things, right? Yeah. Have you used a typewriter? Yeah. I wrote uh, I wrote several movie scripts and papers in college. How on, annoying was that? On an IBM. Uh, it is very annoying because of... Uh, our brains don't think that way anymore because we can just edit on the fly and go in and remove words. But on a yeah, typewriter, once the word is down and then you got five words that past it, you can't go back and... I mean, you really had to think. You had to have the idea. You had to know right. the paper in your head before you actually started writing it. Now, they had correction. It was white out, and thanks to Michael Nesmith's mom and all that. But it still wasn't, it still wasn't pretty. Mm-mm. And uh, same with editing video back in the day. You had to do it linearly. You had to do it chronologically. What was the word processor we all had in the beginning? Was it called like wor- Word something? Um, I know what you're talking word about. Word Shop? Something. I don't know. On the was- original IBM computers or whatever? The early computers. I think it was called Word Shop. Yeah. That's what we all used or something along those lines. So, but- yeah, I, I used to, I don't, yeah, I had, I owned a typewriter. I think every probably family had one in their home, but it wasn't a great one. It wasn't one of those Selectrics, the ball with the ball. I remember That's seeing them I when I go to my mother's school as I was a kid, seeing typewriters there. But uh, very quickly... It was uh, word processor time, and I we still, still had type. We still had typing classes, or I, I let me take that back. We had a typing class in my high school. It was just one. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even like oh, there's just one teacher, and it's just all day. There was just one typing class. So it was like twenty kids that were I, 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 in my no school. one in my high school knew how to type. I, I never took a typing class, but I still have some of my college papers. How uh, fast did you type per minute? Words. I never measured. I was a hunt and pecker. Mm. You know? well, yeah, were you? <laughs> Did you find it? I was it? a hunting pecker. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'll bring them in if you want. You know, it, it's weird what, because the it, because you would line out stuff and cross out stuff and white out stuff. And it looked like a battlefield, man. And by the time the, the professor or the teaching assistant finished grading it with a red pen, it looked like a battlefield. Really? Imagine you have to get it right the first time. No. I'm out. Out of your head. I'm out. We, we've got it so easy now. We don't need maps anymore. So you would have to write navigate. your paper in like pencil on notebook paper, and then you would have to transfer. You have to it type it help. out. Sometimes it would help. I mean, your brain was more organized back then because you had to think that way. In other words, here's the whole sentence I have pictured in my mind as part of a bigger paper. Now let let me type that. And let me hope I don't. Let me hope my stupid fat sausage fingers don't hit the wrong key. I'm out. I don't want to be a part of it. I don't want to it was it was uh, tedious at best. What would be worse? The, and I think I the wrote rampant up. disease or the typewriters. What was worse? Oh, the worst part call. of your your childhood. Mm, yeah. Uh, here's the next item up for bid. Uh, have you ever eaten a TV dinner that was heated in the oven? Well, of course you have. Yeah. Even even Chewy's I done that. No, you Swanson. haven't. No, it's always been Hungry Man or Swanson. 
I used to love the turkey and dressing one. Is what my family would get. That's what I'm looking at right here. Turkey and dressing, peas. And it was all foil. It was a foil. Mashed potatoes. Yeah, foil. It was a foil pan or a foil dish or whatever it was, compartmentalized. And then you would. You get get microwave turkey and dressing? Yeah. Would you, your family hate you? They're called microwave dinners. Oh. I don't think you can put those plastics or whatever in the oven. Well, some you can. I don't. It was y'all's was aluminum foil. There's some yeah. composite. Uh, yeah, it was, it was like a hard little aluminum tray. It was like a in. prison tray, really, because it had four compart, three or four compartments. Well, if you and were you lame, would... you had three compartments. Uh-huh. If your mom was cool, you had fourth compartment. Because what was in that fourth square compartment? The right dessert. There? Yeah, Dang. which and was it, hot. And there was usually two desserts. So it was either the brownie. Yeah. Or there was some weird, like, peach compote thing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. They wanted us to get used to the prison It wasn't dishes. bad, but it was, uh, you had to be careful handling it because it got so hot, you know. Yeah. You didn't want to take it out of the oven with your teeth. No. But you I had some. I, I don't know. I, was a, I wasn't a big fan, but. Well, they weren't good. Let's be honest. They weren't good. Oh, well, that gravy pizzas. was pretty. The gravy and mashed potatoes was pretty good in those. You go for that first. Mm. What, what, was, what were you asking? I, oh, once frozen pizza started leveling up, you know, you started getting the Red Barons mm-hmm. and the Tonys. I had uh, old school, an old school conservative parent. So growing up, you, you sat at the kitchen table together, right? Uh huh. You sat at the table, you talked. But I used to see those <laughs> pictures on the TV dinner yeah. of people who had TV trays that were trays that came out you from the next year recliner, and yeah. you sat in front of the TV and you, you basically. It was this whole new thing that you were eating and being entertained instead of eating silently. Well, you had to watch Walter but, Cronkite. But they were all too high for your couch. So I'm eating like this. Yeah, the couch was tough. And it was tough if you were a kid. It could be too tall. But I think most of the time we ate... I know we had TV trays, but or whatever they were called, but I think we ate at the table most of the I have no memories of my childhood. I wonder if something horrific happened. Was that the beginning of America's I have, laziness? The, I have uh, no, is there a time when you just forget your childhood? I have no memories. Like, I, don't I must have eaten thousands of dinners, right? Yeah. Right. I don't remember one of them. You don't like And food. I know we didn't eat out. You remember your first album? Yeah. Well, first I remember, song back um, in the day? I remember a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah. Do you remember this? <laughs> Food's not significant. Why did that make him mad? I don't know. Why did that make him mad? I was trying trying to bring back memories, maybe, that you blocked out. That's why he's mad. He's He's mad at me today. He got mad at me when I got out of the car today. Really? Yeah, because I'm sick. Why don't you hunt and peckers? Only because, just do click, click, boom. You're like my wife (laughs) in, in 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 that you think you know everything medical. Like, all during the pandemic. She's like, yo, you can't get the... You can't get the uh, coronavirus from that. I go, okay, uh, why don't we just open up a clinic and you can diagnose everybody in the Fauci? neighborhood? Let me ask you a question. Yeah, Fauci, Chewy. Mrs. Fauci, why don't you... Let me ask you a question, Chewie. Yeah, yeah. He, he went you to a t- school event with a billion kids, right? Yeah. Shaking hands, taking pictures, right? He yeah. said. He said. And then he wonders why the next day he got sick. No, it was about three hours later. He, and what he's saying is he thinks that uh, he thinks I shouldn't be here because he thinks. He, no, he, I didn't say that. He's, he. OK, <laughs> I, I said, I said, oh, here. I'm still just trying to get over this food poison. I've been reading about the different kind of food. And poisonings. I slowed my steps a little bit. And he's he, 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 he did all of a sudden just stopped walking. And uh, he's like, I'm like, go ahead. Have you ever heard of anybody catching food poisoning from someone? We don't know it's food poisoning. You have no proof. I know I for know, a fact you have no poisoning. proof. You're not a doc. You don't even a doctor wouldn't know. He would go. You probably might have had. They'll say they wouldn't say definitively you had food poisoning. They would say something like you may have caught a virus. You know it's going to pass. You're alive. You're walking. You're going to work. But they never tell you definitively that they know what it is because. So they then, what's don't. the difference between that and what your wife does and what I do? I'm Jane. You, I'm saying you're a lot like her. You were like you just giving me all. But these, you're saying that we were just giving thing. me all these parameters when we were walking in. Like, well, it's not this, not that, and I think it's this. And I go, you don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> the doctors when you're don't sick, know. They don't know. Bob, if you they ever can use... give you their best guess. Shut up. <laughs> so you you don't know if you're contagious. Not gonna, you don't know if it's a virus you caught from a kid. It seems awfully suspect that you went to an unknown and. Inv- Different environment. Bunch of nasty kids. Bunch of kids that don't wash their hands. Snotty boogers, mud hands. And the next thing you know, you come up lame. It's like, come on. Come on. I can't believe he called you lame. You know. 
I'm saying I don't know either, you're, but you're, I'm saying, I, and I said, and I told you when we walked in, don't read the internet. Your rebuttal, no, sir? because well, you, the last the line of every article don't is, touch me. "Don't touch me." Here's the last don't line breathe. of every medical article on the uh, internet. Yeah, and death. Well, I told you to remind me yesterday. And death. We went to Southside and I ate all the onions that the handle fell into of the tongs. And I said, if I get sick, remind me that this happened. <laughs> I. Southside Flying Pizza? No, Market. No. We got sausage. Love that sausage in Southside. Yeah. You guys didn't even ask me so that I could say no? I can't go? We did ask you. Oh, you you did. said you had to stay here. Oh. Yeah. Or you had to go home and come back. No you, one said. You had a pre-programmed no, so I don't think you even heard us ask. Asked you you just started going, nah, I got to think. We were talking know. about Saturday show. Yeah, probably. Then we were talking about Saturday yeah. show, and I go, hey, let's take this meeting. Well, I can't eat let's anything Let's move anyway. it to Southside. Yeah, you can't You can't keep it down. You well, said I can that. keep I feel it bad down. I don't, I'm not vomiting. I it, I feel bad for you. I, I'm just saying that. Here's the good part. You want to hear the good part of this? That's not what I meant to say. Seven pounds. Yeah. Seven pounds? Yeah, since Friday. You should go to a dock in a box. And let them tell you they don't know. Right. Well, I'm going to say it's viral. I'm not I going to pay you. somebody. No. So I started looking. This is not uh, what this is. We'll talk about that. We'll, ca- we'll come back to my butthole later. You do not want a part of America. I have no desire have you, to come back to your butthole. Have you ever made ever. ice using an aluminum ice cube tray? Of course, of course, I have. course With he the has. Handle. My God. Of course he has. Why had are we that even asking? Handle. Have you ever uh, played music on an eight track uh, player? Well, of course he's done that. He still I, has I never one. had one in my car. He's I, Bob Fonseca. My girlfriend had one. Have you ever listened to music on a transistor radio? Sony seven transistor. I remember how many trans seven transistors. Be on my mobile. Used to have it under my pillow at night and listen to WFIL. In That's still the weirdest thing to me is that the Who sang this goofy song. Could you imagine a rock band coming out today and being just like? Listen to songs on my iPod. Mm. Ooh, ooh, I love my iPod. Hey, there was a time before us where radio was a big thing. And Had, the people on radio were stars. And that ended just about the year before I got into right it. Right before I came yeah. 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 Have you ever bought a 45? Yeah. I still have the first one that I ever bought. Have you ever, did you ever buy? Beatles, uh, Hey Jude Revolution. Still have it. Did you ever buy Capitol Records 4932? What's that? That's Surfing USA by the Beach Boys. Probably worth a lot of money, right? Is that what you're going to tell me? I, no, no, I wasn't a Beach Boys fan until later in life. To like my 30s. Whoa, here's a question for you. Have you ever, Did you ever shop at Penny's? No. No, uh, no, not as a kid because we were on military installations, so you bought your food at the commissary and you bought your... Other items at the base exchange, not the post exchange. That's a PX. We went to the BX, the base exchange. Now, pennies is related to JC pennies, right? Yeah. Well, I think that. But same, pennies was the precursor. Yeah, I think it was same company. But we we didn't. There was a place in New Jersey we used to go shop called Two Guys, but I think that was a one-off department store. Are we going to Two Guys after church, Dad? Can I buy some bell bottoms and then whack right across the mug? Oh. Okay, now I have a one-two punch for you. I'm not and buying you're gonna... you, you little sissy boy. You're not getting <laughs> bell bottoms. What do you think you're one? Who do you think you are, Ringo? I'm glad we didn't do me today because I would have. I, I would have been no. Bam, on, on... and another one right across the kisser. For good luck. I would have been no luck. on almost all of these, but this I remember. I know I never did it, but I remember one of these. My dad sitting... didn't really hit me in the head like that. I remember one of these sitting in a parking lot outside of the Woolco near my house. Yeah. Woolco. Which was part of part Woolworths. Of Woolworths. Yeah. yeah. And I clearly remember this in the parking lot. And I just remember always wanting to go to it. And my and I was like, oh, can we go there sometime? And my mother was like, why? The horse? No. I'm getting to it. And I was just like, I don't know. Because it, it was so fascinating to me because it was so tiny. But in, in the parking lot, have you ever? did you ever get your photos developed at a... Photo mat or a Fox photo, some kind of drive-through. I, mean, I feel photo like mat. that was just yesterday that we would go to the Fox photo over there and burn it and in front of Dart Bowl or whatever when Dart Bowl was there. They had these when you wanted to get your pictures developed. There were these little tiny huts. Yeah, you didn't I, even go inside of a store. It was a little tiny hut in a parking lot, and you, you would drop up, it off. Drop it off, and they'd say, "Okay, come back uh, a couple to, days." We always went to Eckerd's. 
Right. Right. Everybody, That's different. Everybody That's got into that game. Target was in that game. Once the big companies uh, got into it, it started crushing the little... Because the other the little guys said, okay... Fox Photo was out of San Antonio, by the way. We don't we don't make enough money... I think. ...to, uh, to have standalones. They would build these little tiny kiosks, and they'd say, hey, can we build a drive through kiosk here and basically lease two parking spaces worth of land from you? Yeah. And some guy had to sit everywhere. in that hot box and oh, take video and take Brutal. put film in an envelope. You know, perverts were making copies of everybody. absolutely they were. No, and you know, we knew. in the 1970s, you know, people were taking a lot of nudies. They would keep a book because I knew we knew a guy, a fan of the show, told us that there was a that all the little kiosks had a book of the pictures that they couldn't. I guess people see. I mean, they, my FBI agent is seeing them, and then my cell phone provider is seeing my correct. News, so. Have you ever looked at through someone else's photos using a slide projector? Of course you have. I never had one, but I've been to home. You know, that was a big joke in the day. Like someone would come back from big vacation. And they'd be like, come over and, and look at my photos. You'd have to come over, go over for dinner, and then they would have a slideshow of their Greek vacation or whatever. Greece vacation. <laughs> and so. here... Here's the last question you, I have for you. I love the sound, though, that thing used to make. Tink-a-chink. And the fan going. Uh, last question for you, and this is going to be a definitive yes. I, can, I know it already. Have you ever owned or driven a car that needed not one, but two keys to operate? One for the door and one for the ignition? Yeah, which was, I feel like, almost all cars. Well, I, one, I, I know that. Yeah. What? This was before 89, right? The, the GM cars had one square key and one round key. But so did Ford. Yeah. I mean, that's the way that you could distinguish it. Right. I think the square key was for the ignition, and the round the rounder key was for the door. I think I can't remember. The, I think I, I do think it was the opposite, maybe. The small round was for the door, the big, nasty, that's what chunky I mean. one for That's what the, I mean. Oh, yeah, okay. that's what I said. Yeah, the big one. The square. I, I consider the square one to be bigger. Yeah, the but they were one. always keyed differently. And um, I remember, like, people, you, friends whose parents were wealthy, they had European cars. Then we went to the double-sided key. Double-sided key? Yeah, where both sides are cut. And you couldn't go to a regular key-cutting place to get a... Like, you can't dupe a Toyota key now at at uh, Home Depot. Because it's cut on both sides. You can dupe a... Just, nope. Try it. Go. Take your Volvo key down there. See go if ahead. you can get it cut. Go ahead. Are you mad at me today? Nope. nope. You can't. Just because I have diarrhea? <laughs> just because you come off like you think you know, just go to the doctor. I have my Toyota so that key. That way you know that they don't know. That way you'll feel, you'll, you'll feel better because you go, well, you know what? They don't know. But I got this key cut there. No, that's not. You can't. That's not true. Uh-uh. So where did I get it cut? I don't know. You can't. Okay. They don't have the blanks. Mm-hmm. I mean, it might have been a special auto. It may have been a special, you know, weekend promotion or something. But yeah, a one-off, an event. That's probably what it was. I probably was there during for a weekend promotion. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be a special. It's. I, I'll say there has to be a special machine, and I know the places that I go don't have that machine. They I think say. this Walmart or Norwood has it. Maybe. Yeah, it's possible. How am I supposed to steal cars if I can't get keys made? Yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're trying to start that with me. You know what? You can't get a key made at Renegade, but you can pretty much get everything else done. Look at that. With your, a, they don't have that at Home Depot. That is a chunky key right there. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. I've seen better. Uh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting very excited because uh, as of the 20th, by by midnight on the 20th, I will finally be done with uh, really with the most, I think kind of the toughest nine weeks I've gone through here in this building. And I'm very looking forward to it because right after that, uh, Bob and I are going to head out. Bob's going to hold my hand uh, over to Renegade Truck Accessories. Oh, yeah, we are. And I'm going to get a, uh, a lift kit, a modest lift kit on my uh, truck to celebrate uh, my truck's 25th birthday. Plus uh, new rims, new wheels. Couple of other little doodads, and then, and then we're gonna have, have a big uh, reveal party. We should out in, the, out in the parking lot with beer and uh, stuff and things. We should have a big reveal party. Yeah, of, I didn't uh, think about El that. El Diablo. We should, have, we should have a beer bash. Yeah, everybody bring. Your... I'll bring a Bluetooth speaker. We'll play some, you know, play some tunes. Okay. Bob Fonseca has had to step uh, out for a bit. I got him sick. 
I, uh, he caught food poisoning from me. Yeah, I don't, yeah, okay. No, I'll do that story. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. He's yeah, actually right, talking right. to some of his stringers right now, so he can, can bring you, you the me best MGK on in the rock and roll news, Call ladies and gentlemen. Office and see if everything you, you want to know about rock and roll news, and even stuff you didn't right, know you yeah. wanted to know, and that's all coming right. in three minutes. And uh, Eddie Vedder too. Hey, if they're too loud, you're too old. I report the news. That's what I do. It's Bob Fonseca's oh, Rock and Roll News. Oh, it pained me to say that, but uh, I'll tell you the story in just a second. But please allow me to introduce myself. Oh, yes. I'm a man of wealth and taste. That's Those are Mick Jagger's words, not mine. I've only got one of those tastes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Huh? huh? Sympathy for the devil, baby. I got no sympathy for aging rockers, though. Not really. I'll tell you about it in just a second. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Rock's last great reporter, Bob Fonseca, here exclusively through you exclusive contract with KLBJFM and the powers that be to be with you at this time every morning. Whether I like it or not, most mornings I like it. I like it a lot. All right, here we go. I got the headlines for you so you don't look like a doofus. When you go into work, you know, everybody's talking rock and roll. They got that. They got rock and roll news. And you're like, what do you got? What do you got, Bill? Woo! Hey, what you got? Uh, I don't have any rock and roll news today. Well, you know what? Listen up. Oh, Bill. Now, it pains me to say this. You know, there was a day where there was the, the expression was uh, predominant in the industry. And by the industry, I mean the business of rock and roll. If, if it's too loud, you're too old. <laughs> But now the reverse is kind of true. If they're too loud, i.e. the audience, you're too old. Whoa. John Mellencamp is stepping in it again. He doesn't want. Now think about this for a second. I'm the listening. guy that did Little Pink Houses for you and me and Jack and Diane and all those great. What an American hero. Danceable oh, yeah. pop songs, you mm-hmm. know, that just get the crowd going, right? You right. hear that. Do, 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 do. Right? Yeah. The guy that was Little behind. Diddy. The, about Jack. You know, the guy behind the Tasty Freeze. Yeah. Remember That's that one? one? Yeah. He's saying, hey, man, you want to come and scream and yell and get drunk? Don't come to my show. <laughs> come on, John. Maybe it's time to hang up your boogie shoes. The guy's name is the Little Bastard. I know. It's time. If, if that, come on, man. People want to come. to. They want to hear your hits, and they want to have a good time, and you want to play your folk stuff, and come on. Hurt so good? Come on, baby, now. Hurt so good. Come on. He chastised a crowd in a theater. And uh, he says, I do expect etiquette. First of all, etiquette's a big word for a rock and roller. It really is. Yeah. And I'm, I'm proud all of right. him. And here, look, let's Put give him a, a little bit of that. Put you know what I'm saying? He told the Washington, the, 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 the Washington Post, the lying Washington Post, he told them, quote, I do expect etiquette. Maybe I should do it in a British accent. Let me try. Okay. I do expect etiquette inside of the theater. Ooh, ooh. The same way you would at a Broadway show. Where did Bob Fonseca go? My shows are not really concerts anymore. They're performances. And there's a difference between a performance and a concert. Shut up, Mellencamp. (laughs) Buddy of mine works for him. I should be quiet. I don't want him to lose his job. Come on, man. You're either a rocker or you're not. Don't come off like you're some kind. I'm sorry I have to editorialize here, Matt. You don't mind, do you? Well, can you imagine my feelings Springsteen a little bit. getting in front of the audience and say, hey, man, everybody sit down. Stop having a good time right now. Stop, stop holding up signs with song titles you want me to play. This is a... Please have some etiquette. Keep your panties on. Don't throw yeah, them up don't throw my. Don't throw your panties in your hotel you keys on the stage. Yeah, I can't ones. imagine that from, from Springsteen. Now ask me if I can imagine it from uh, Van Morrison. Yeah, that's fine. Like Van Morrison is a real... Van Morrison's got a lot of rules if you want to come see his show. Never came off as pleasant. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me. Mellencamp says he demands a certain amount of decorum from his audience. Oh, come on! Does it, is, it, is he allowing his narcissism to get in his own way? Look, I'm not for everyone anymore. Yeah, you're for no one now. That's what it sounds like. 
If you want to come and scream and yell and get drunk, don't come to my show. Oh, I bet the beer vendors and the whiskey slingers at your concerts are real Super happy. Stoked. Real happy with that Super statement, stoked. John Melling. It's time. Hang it up. Go work at that Tasty Freeze. Wow. Oh. I mean it, John. Come on, man. You wrote some of the best good time music I ever heard. Good I saw time. your first good tour. Time. I saw your first big tour at the at, at the Irwin Center. You opened for heart. It should have been the other way around. But no one knew that you were going to take the scene by storm back in 19... What was that? 88? I don't think he's got the hits to be acting like that. I mean, like 78? That, Huh? He doesn't have the hits to be acting like We've that. Got a ton of you hits. should be grateful for that. People are still coming to watch. Rain on the scarecrow, blood on the plow. Come Never on. Never heard of him. No, I don't remember that. You don't? Blood on the plow. Rain mm. on the scarecrow. He blood. better play that. What about last. rocking in the U? Can you give us a little rocking in the USA while I rockin dig up in another the story? USA. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have to editorialize. I don't want to be like CNN, where I'm not giving you the news. I'm just giving you opinion. But my opinion is, John Mellencamp, if you're going to be that cranky about people having a good time at a rock show that you're saying is no longer a rock show, I'm confused. Just hang it up. Mm. Does he really just mean I'm tired of the obnoxious people just yelling at me? Because that's different. Because when you say don't come and scream and shout, like me going, woo, that's screaming and shouting. Correct? Yeah. But you created the music. You created the music that elicits that response, that makes people want to drink and have a good time. Yeah. Now, I'm saying, yeah, have some decorum when you drink. Don't get sloppy drunk. You but got come five on. hits. Play them first, and we'll all leave them. We won't get I'm drunk. kind of mad. Ready. Just get out of the game, dude. I'm sure you socked away a little bit of money. I'm sure you got a little bit of mailbox yeah, yeah. money coming. I see. I hear your songs and movies once in a while. I'm sorry. Now I'm upset. Why now I'm mad. Don't be mad. Machine Gun Kelly. Now, you guys claim that Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox are no longer together, but I say no. They just, they're together still. They can't live without each other. They're like oxygen to each other. You know what I mean? Her career's going nowhere. His career's going nowhere. And so they're just, well, I'm doing a lot of editorializing today. I mean, you kind of are. I apologize, but I feel like they're oxygen to each other. Like, they both burn because... They feed off of each other. So they just are no longer engaged, but they're still together. Anyway, a lot of controversy. She has been doing some interviews saying, hey, uh, ladies or girls, especially young girls, stay away from... What, is she, what was Don't her, waste your energy. Don't waste your energy oh, on man. boys. She she's, said boys. She's right. But I think they're still a couple. I just don't think they're engaged anymore. Anyway, there's also a controversy because MG, uh, MGK Machine Gun Kelly... And I'm not sure if he's a rocker or a rapper right now. Which way? He might be a country. He might go Beyonce and go country. Oh, he'll go ruin that genre? I don't know. That'll be good. He uh, he says that he was banned from this year's Coachella. Is that what it's called? Yeah, mm-hmm. I would have been. Is that acceptable? I like Coachella. It was allowed. The judges allowed it. Coachella. In that language, it's probably how it sounds. Yeah. Coachella. Coachella. And he says he doesn't understand why. Coachella. Well, maybe it's because in 2012, you said that they were not... Uh, what did he say in 2012 about Coachella that they weren't uh, relevant? He's, he's I'm also, paraphrasing he's right, there. I, I, I hate to agree with him. I'm paraphrasing there, but uh, he said Coachella is a huge joke. He wrote that in, uh, in 2020 in uh, 2012, I think. Yeah, it's corporate as you know Didn't what. He play since then, and they only accept the accepted. Huh? Maybe you and. John Mellencamp can go hang out. Your careers are probably... A lot of, a lot of grumpies in the, in the rock and roll news these days. I'm telling you, man. I don't know what it is. Rock and roll should be fun, man. They're literally rock and roll. Like, but I know. I'm a Grateful Dead, you know? like Just like, hey, man. Come on. We're grateful to be dead. You I'm think th- we feel bad about it? We're happy to be dead. I'm thinking of going to see, and I want you to go, Chewy. I'm thinking of going to see... I don't like the dead at all or any of the, any of the versions of the dead. It's just not my it's not my jam. But I think I do want to go to the sphere and see that. Will you drop acid with me? I'll drop acid on you. How about oh that? God. How's oh, that, man? That is. All right, I'll tell you what. what he wanted at all. I'll tell you what. I can't take a whole tab or whatever it is. 
But if you put a little on your tongue and you touch your tongue to my tongue, uh huh, we could do that. I'll tell. That's nasty. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you do. You just do one whip it. Last it lasts fifteen seconds. Okay. All right. All right. You're done in fifteen. Seconds. What if I go crazy though and jump off the balcony of the sphere? I'll hold you down. Anyway, uh, they get it going, man. All right. The ticket prices are reasonable to that one. I'll get us some whip. They're probably going to give tickets away. Johnny Rude will probably come down and go, "Hey guys, you want some free tickets to the sphere? We got to give away five. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's get back to the rock and roll news. All right. I'm sorry I've been editorializing, but come on, man. If we're not having fun with rock and roll, let's stop it. Let's not do it anymore, okay? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on. Rock. Let's rock. Go! He wrote R-O-C-K in the USA. B-R-O-K-E in the USA. Uh, Steve Hackett's feeling better. Oh, I gave you a little false news yesterday, and I was only editorializing there when I told you about Disney Plus teasing uh, some kind of version of Let It Be. Uh, coming out, of course, the film from around uh, 1970, I think, mm. uh, that documented uh, some of the Beatles' last times together in the studio, and uh, not very flattering. Whoa! A lot of fighting going on. But uh, isn't that what makes them interesting as a band? Because they did come off as kind of twee for a very long right, time. Right, 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 right. Did anybody really care about the Beatles until they started doing the Helter Skelters, uh, the Rubber Souls, and whatnot? Right. You're right, Matt. When they when they became when they got off the road, when they stopped doing those stupid concerts in football stadiums, yeah, in baseball stadiums, because they didn't even have there was no amplification. They were way ahead of amplification in their time. Did you know that? Yeah, there, was, there wasn't any mass amplification back then. That's crazy. To do band, they literally set their speakers on the stage. Crazy. And maybe use those little horn speakers that were up in the rafters of the baseball stadium or whatever but uh anyway i speculated that mccartney was gonna maybe recut let it be because he never was happy with the record the way it sounded under phil Spector's regime and he never was crazy about the film but it will show in its entirety on disney plus it's just going to be remastered so it's going to look better but it's going to be the original form factor of the original movie so i think that's good that we're preserving history we don't need to rewrite paul's history about the band, and I love Paul. I love Sir Paul. Do you though? But, yeah, I do. But I, I, you know, he already did it with Let It Be. Remember, he took Let It Be and did Let It Be Naked, and it was more of a stripped down. He took the Phil Phil Specterness out of it. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't let bad, it but it wasn't the original. You know, the let the original stand and let the original movie stand. I'm editorializing again, but man, I'm passionate about rock and roll. I'm you know why? why? You know why? 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 Because it saved reason. my life in 1971. Oh. I wouldn't be sitting here with you today mm. if I hadn't discovered pirate radio off of the coast of Great Britain, out there in the English Channel or wherever it was. I don't even know where it was. Radio Luxembourg. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see if I got one more story before I get to Rock and Roll News Jr. I told you yesterday about... Uh, uh, I told you yesterday about Billy Joel. CBS is going to make good and re-air the entire Billy Joel TV thing. I'd like to see that without commercial interruption, though. That's for sure. Uh, and again, don't forget, Record Store Day coming up this Saturday morning. The doors of Piranha Records will swing open wide at 10 a.m. People start lining up about, man, I got a show to do. We've got that show the same day. What oh. show? Because I was going to go out to Piranha Records like 11 o'clock at night on right. uh, Friday night. Yeah. Sounds like get fun. In line. Sounds great. But I'll be wiped out by 420. Were you just calling I? out all these rockers about rocking and you are worried about sleep? He kind of is just kind of throwing it in your face. Will you guys what hold show me? do we have on 420? At the, at the Moon Tower. What is that? At the, at, we gotta, we've got a... a a live podcast. We have a live with podcast with super special Tower? guests. With super special guests, surprise oh, guests. Super oh my stars. god! Can I get tickets, or is it just for you? Uh, go for to people? radiotheater.org. That's not where you go at all. Austintheater.org. If I go to austintheater.org, go to johnmellencamp.org. If I go to austintheater.org, or if I Google Moon Tower Comedy, yeah, I can find links to buy tickets to come right. see us live. Right. That's interesting. It's time for Rock and Roll News Junior. Now, you've heard. Now, this is uh, the headlines for the kids. 
on the way to the dropout zone right now, and I try to, you know, key on some of their artists, their favorite acts out there. These are acts I've never heard for the most part, but uh, because I'm not a kid anymore. But you know what? I'm a kid at heart. And anyway, kids, we're halfway through the week. We made it to hump day. And uh, hump day is not what you think. It's because a camel has a hump. But it goes up, and then at the top of the hump, that's Wednesday. And now you're on the downslide to the weekend. I know you're looking forward to the weekend. But you got a few more days of school to deal with. Stay in school, read lots of books, and start a band. And then send me the link, okay? Because I want to hear you. All right. You've heard of uh, what's J-pop, Chewy? Japanese What's pop. What's K-pop, Matt? That's a Korean What's pop music. What's G-pop? Oh, uh, German pop music. Nope. That- Jojo Siwa, the karma singer, spoke uh, to Billboard uh, about the backlash she received over her original comments that she wants to see gay pop as an official as an official musical genre. What uh, kind? Gay pop, which G pop, which would also be just could be called pop pop. Are they just? Is well, she's getting a little redundant? bit of backlash because uh, there's never been pop music that but gay she, people like. She wants it to be an official genre. In other words, she wants a chart. Okay. All right. Of G-pop. Do they all? And do all the members have to be gay. I'm all for it because we're all. Interested. Is it on how it sells or how gay the song is? No, Matt. Do I have to be gay to listen to it? These are these are questions we're asking. Does she have answers? You guys are sounding very very. This is a new genre. Not hip. What do you mean? It's all new to us. Bob. She says she simply wants to see more queer art get recognized. So okay. here's the thing. When K-pop it comes to is art, a thing that people have done, but it's not an official genre of music. In other words, you can't win an award for it. Okay. Right? I There's not a chart for it. She's just saying, let's legitimize it for what it is. And I think people like Madonna and things like that, they would they would say, yeah, hell yeah, let's do this. And I say, hell yeah. I think music What is do I care? For... Who's buying Billboard? I thought if... the whole point of music was for everybody. And if we put... I'm Just only artists saying it, in look, general, gay people versus straight people. I think the gay people will have it as far as it's not on the iTunes art, charts. You know? It's not on any of the charts. She's just saying, let's put it in the chart. Let's make it legitimate. Okay. Okay. I guess so many I was gay pop you. artists. I think that those gay pop artists do deserve a bigger home than what they have right now. I agree. JoJo, I agree. What's missing, you think? I agree, JoJo. Uh, anyone, anyone who gave quality parenting to JoJo, hmm. that's what's missing. Oh, look, come on, She's charming. Yeah, but do you remember What's her? Gonna be the do you difference? remember JoJo when she was like four years old and they were parading her out in the the little girl, little Miss Pageants and what have you? No, I can't look at that kind of stuff on the internet. I know it's horrendous. And then she had to go through the whole Bose thing. And, I mean, court and order. She, I think she's. I think Missy was trying desperately uh, to find herself. I as thought an you adult would be for her, this, Matt. I actually feel a lot of compassion for this young woman. I think. Uh, I think she's just saying, "Hey, give us a chart." I just don't somewhere. know what the difference is. Well, you have a point there. I mean, the K-pop. And then some people Korean, might be put on that. the chart and then go, oh, no, no, no. And I'm they're not, speaking I, Korean. I, some people aren't out yet, so they might not want to be on the chart even though they're on the chart. You know what I mean? And I, as far as I know, I mean, gay people I don't, know. don't have a, like, I don't know. I think it's an interesting topic to have and maybe we should revisit it. Uh, send your comments to Bob's Rock News at gmail.com. Com. And there you can. I didn't get any requests for shout outs today. I'm a little surprised. You guys are letting me down. I don't, you guys have a shout out? Anybody, uh, run, anybody run into somebody at HEB or Target or anything that said, hey? Uh, oh, hey, could I ask for a shout out? Yeah. Um, I, and I forgot to mention, but uh, can we give a shout out to the uh, entire uh, management, ownership, and, and staff of a long term, long time Austin legendary business top notch? A hundred percent. Yeah. The, the 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 background to Dazed and Confused. Uh, they shot the part of that there. Did you go uh, recently? So the many original, music videos. We'll talk about it later. Uh, the original owners uh, sold to a group who have managed to keep it still old school Austin, and they originally they did something really nice at that oh, talent show. Was that? And they just gave so, they gave so much. I was amazed that a local business could just would come out of their pocket as deep as they did, and I think yeah. they deserve a shout-out. They Top got notch. it. They, they got it. I love still it. Still showing go. what it is to be old-school Austin. Community. Let's go. Sing us out, Chewy. Community! Went a little over. Sorry, guys. You know, I went off on uh, John Mellencamp. Listen, dude. If you're listening, I know you want to fight me right now because you're, you're one of those guys, but maybe you should just stick to painting. I hear you're pretty good at it. 
stop rocking. But excuse me, I want to have a couple of pops if I come to your show. And I want to hear R.O.C.K. in the USA and Jack and Diane. So pardon. Excuse me. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Hey, I'm not above you. I'm not below you. I'm right here with you. Uh... Food poisoning, by strict definition, is an illness caused by food contamination. By this definition, it is not contagious. Hmm. I had food poisoning uh, over the weekend. (laughs) Still feeling really rough. Bob keeps doing this weird thing. Like, we walk down the hall, he won't walk near me. This morning, I I could tell that he was trying to trail behind me while we were outdoors walking inside. Because you're worried you're going to catch this from me. And you say I have no way of knowing that I actually had food poisoning. Right. You've di- you've self-diagnosed yourself. I Physician, have, I have heal multiple, thyself. I have multiple, multiple bowls full of Rhea that can prove that I had food poisoning. It doesn't mean ladies, anything. It could be ladies, that, that could, could I be any sexier? That could, could be, I be uh, any sexier? Could right be a now? virus. Well, sure. Food poisoning can be viral or bacterial. Or viruses it could even can be, be spread. Yes, they can. Mm, we learned but that. But here's mm, the thing. Mm. I would have to, A, not wash my hands, which I wouldn't do because I'm not cruel. The reason I'm sick is probably there's somebody out there who's vicious and true, truly evil who prepared food and handled you're, it with their Rhea hands and then gave mad, it to me. But I also know that you were in an environment that you're normally not like in, which is around kids. And kids are That's no, only because the courts say I can't be. <laughs> and you were judging uh, some kind of uh, judging children, beauty pageant. Judging children, that Child one beauty stupid. pageant. That one doesn't look cool. And uh, the next day, boom, you you know. So, I don't know. I'm just I'm playing Sherlock Holmes here a little bit, but it seems like there's cause and effect, right? I think so. I don't know. But you, if you want to say it was food poisoning, name the place. That that's what I'm trying to uh, try name, to explain to you. That name the place that got, some, they gave you know it to you. Do you know that there's some, there's some food poisoning like listeria that takes almost two weeks to build up in your system to make you sick? Uh huh. So I'm supposed to name something I ate two weeks ago? Now you're saying you have listeria? I don't know what I have. <laughs> I mean, I have food poisoning. What's I have the all diagnosis? the symptoms of food poisoning. Doctor, what's the diagnosis? I'm just saying we don't know. I I go through these these machinations in my head all the time. If when I'm I'm rarely sick, but when I do when I am sick, I'm like, you know, I'm trying to piece piece it together because you want to know, right? And then you go to the doctor, and they, I know and, they, and, and, and most of the time the doctor just goes, I think I think you know you just got to wait it out. Tough, you know. It was an awakening moment. I don't know what it is. It, it could be viral. But taking a food handler's class when I was back in one of the days when I was working in a kitchen. How many? Ha- and they explained to me, hey, you'll never know. Right. You'll never know what made you sick unless you get something very specific. Like like if you eat a bad oyster and you get that red tide disease or whatever and they can test for that. then you'd. Sp- but most of the time, you don't know what's made you sick. Did your child beauty pageant have like uh, like a lot of times that fundraisers have? It was not have, a beauty pageant. It have, was a talent show. Uh, and they did a talent. fantastic job different and I really enjoyed talent. it. Did anyone do good ship lollipop? No. Um... Did they have a? Did they have though? Potluck. Sometimes they do the at these oh, school yeah. events. Sometimes there's cake on plates. You just did you eat potluck? I ate no food. That's what I mean. Potluck. I, I ate no food. Okay. I, I went to there, and there's no way I could have gotten sick as sick as I got as fast as I got from something I got there because it was three hours later. Well, I hope you feel better. That's. Did they serve food? No, they didn't serve food. What kind of private school was Who that? won the bathing suit it's contest? Pri- there was no bathing suit. It was a middle school. I was asked <laughs> to judge a talent show. There were some very good bands, some fun musicianship, some dancing and revelry. What did your kid do? My kid did not participate. Mm. She didn't even allow me to tell anybody that I was related to her. Well, how can we make it better for you? I don't want to. I don't want to fight you on this. I, didn't ask I go you to make the same it better things. For me. I'm d- trying to. I. I I'll, just. By the way, Ronnie Chang tickets are available at our show. 
and we'll have uh, opportunities to win them at uh, let's say about eight ten and yeah. about eight forty today. I'm just saying my my diagnosis of what you have is just as valid as your diagnosis. I mean, what do you Fine. you Fine. diagnose it? Fine. What do you think, Fine. Chewy? He's, uh, he's I mean, little... we're all taking guesses here. But Shots in the dark. Every day, why is every day do we have to bicker and fight about something that doesn't even matter and is stupid? Because it's in the radio handbook. Unless we both get sick, and then it's, you yeah. know, not stupid. Yeah. Is there a possibility we could get sick? Is there a small chance that this could have been viral, viral, and contagious? Like, yes, like the, absolutely, there is. I think that's all Bob Uh-oh. wanted. That's all. That's all. That's, that's all, all I wanted, wanted to say. To I mean, I just like anybody's guess is as good as another when well, it comes to these things. What's up, Colin? Yeah, what's up? Uh, I just wanted to uh, talk about a food poisoning I got once. And oh, sure, story got- time. Why not? If anybody yeah. has, if anybody's ever thrown up, call and let us. We want to hear the story. What'd you eat? <laughs> what happened? Was this a special oh, food I, poisoning I ate story? Chicken. I ate chicken and I got so sick, I almost got hospitalized. Um, and I was sick for 11 days. This is the most I've ever been sick. And I had to go to the hospital twice. The second time, they made me take a stool sample for three different things. And it turned out by the 11th day, um, they finally got the third sample in. And they were like, it's Campy Lubacter Jujani, Ooh. which is derived from... Campy Lubacter, uh, that one's hard to get. You had Jumanji? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, it was... Yeah, Jumanji, uh, right out my butt. Um yeah, I threw up, and I had a temperature of, like, almost 104 Dude. for three days. It was brutal. You know, if you have a fever of 103, you would be hot-blooded. You got to check it and see. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So what did they end up doing well, with I you? I know where I got the, it. The Campylobacter is from chicken, and I know where I got it. And uh, I've never eaten there since. And then even eating chicken for months afterwards, I was very uh, hesitant and kind of ordered sides instead of ordering chicken at places. How did you know you know it was from that place? Yeah, how did you know? Because Matt says you can't know. Yeah, well, and I tend to I agree mean, with I him. Can because they said that particular poisoning was from chicken. So and, and you I hadn't had, had chicken had chicken in a week. But so, Campylobacter like, takes two to appear in your system. No, that's not. Uh, when I read up on it, it said that it could. It up could. To. But the thing is, is I hadn't had chicken in like a week and a half. So I must have been the place that I had chicken like. What place yeah, was about it? Twenty four hours prior to no, that. Don't, what place was it? Don't. Uh dude, I don't want to say because it's good chicken, but and it's, <laughs> it's a small business. I'm not really going to stop going there. Yeah, so it, it doesn't matter what you uh, say. Thing, people don't. It does. But here, uh, here's the thing too: is it probably had nothing to do with how they handle it, or whatever. It, it. We have a mass industry that produces chicken, and we don't farm chicken the right way, and people are going to get sick no matter what. How about that? Well, I don't think you don't honestly, have to name I it. That's it fine. You also ain't country there. strong like me. That's the other yeah, thing. I yeah. wish my stomach was able to handle stuff you eat. Did what the you, hell is that supposed yeah, to mean? I got to tell it, you right it now. Mean, it means that you seem like you can put it down. I'd love to go eat tacos with you. It seems like you could go Any get day. some real good pastor tacos, uh-huh. something that's not chicken. But, well, let me um, get this straight. Gonna, you, you you got sick for you're 11 gonna have to take days. You're going to separate cars, though, dude. Only Chewy can I fit in his. 25 you, pounds. You almost died. Oh, I want yeah. this. Yeah. And you've had chicken since? Oh, that was two years ago. I don't care. It took me about it took me about four months. I would never eat chicken again. Eat chicken. I was Stop. I was checking my wife's chicken that she cooked. I was temping it. I was very scared, dude. It was, it's a one it in a terrifying. like literally multi million. It doesn't shot. matter. I haven't eaten since Friday. All food seems repulsive to me right now. When I see it, yeah, my man. brain exactly is just like, my brain. Secretly, my brain subconsciously is like, "All food's gonna kill you, bro." And I nothing looks good or or seems good. Bro, I get food poisoning yeah, I was and still want to see. Definitely on a, uh, a, a a kind of a low key diet after that because I was just so scared to eat. Yeah. Um, I mean that was yeah. It was it was pretty terrifying. The first time I went to the doctor, they were like, "Oh, you probably have a stomach bug. You sure it isn't like uh, you know." Uh, something else and i was like i don't know man and then uh, oh yeah after, it starts like, with the guesses after, right after eight days they were like well let's do some samples and eight i was like days oh. matt eight days well that might be yeah, where i'm headed then, uh, because i'll tell you this right now financially i'm not going to be able to afford the uh the underwear purchasing i'm 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 headed toward right now just yeah it, it was pretty terrible i was uh people called me to see if i was doing all right and they were like you didn't even sound right you sounded I mean, I didn't have energy to even like talk. It was so bad. Well, but uh, did you? I mean, I'm sorry. I feel for you. I understand. And 
It's well, it's going to be fine. It's not a big deal. What was the just, place? I'll dump yeah. it. Oh, oh no, we only have the biggest show of our lives in th- four uh, days. Let's just put it this way: it's a chicken place inside of an HUB. That's all I'm going to say. It's delicious, but that's all I can say. Okay. All right. That you could you could probably figure it out. And uh, unfortunately, I mean the chick. I I will say I used to love it and I'd eat it all the time, but now I'm just too dang scared. Like it's just mm. that that was that took me out, and I'm a pretty healthy guy. Here's wow. the deal. What Matt knows me, so I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'm not going to act like it if I see you. I actually don't know who this is, but here's the thing: I want you. We're going to the next time we have tickets that you really want, you call us, and if you'll eat from that place again, we'll give you the tickets that we have. There you go. I mean, I feel like the chances are, if I got sick after I eat there, I'd probably know what it is. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. Easy. Lightning that's can't true. strike twice. That's right. But. Yeah, I, you know, it can, but I don't. Hey, I don't you, know. That was just really scary. Did you I gain mean, that 25 pounds right back, or did you manage to keep, manage to keep oh, it yeah. off? Oh, yeah. I drink beer and eat tacos, of course. That wasn't a problem at all. Dude, I'm sorry you got the Jumanji, man. Yeah, dude. Man, it was, yeah, because when they called and told me what it is, I was like, I can't even pronounce this. And, yeah. of course, my wife looked it up, and she's like, it's from undercooked chicken. Yeah, it's like my, like, my uh, brother-in-law got a disease that I couldn't pronounce that he got from bat poop in his garden. Yeah, which is weird because why is he eating bat poop? It's good if you taste it. You know, I mean, no, he hey, breathed it. Does, same thing. Goes to the same place. He got food poisoning. Mm. Ah, nice. See, that, yeah, that's called well, pun. And he was uh, out for like six months. What are you months. eating today? Yeah, get up. Also, get off the what phone. What am I eating today? A vegetarian sandwich because I'm trying to... I'm sorry, man. It. I'm okay. sorry your yeah, life yeah, is dude. this way you know, now. It's, it's actually really good. Yeah, I mean, and you can say that out loud because you're married. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to fight yeah, other. I mean, you don't have to fight other dudes out there for for pelts and for skin. So, so you I can say that. We're the okay lesson it. here is it took your doctor eight days to diagnose you, but Matt's two diagnosed doctors. himself. Doctor two doctors. Like, oh, two doctors. Eight day. days. Matt diagnosed yeah. himself in one hour. Yeah. Very proud of wow. myself. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Bob. Thanks. You. We're dispatching you. We're behind Bob. Uh, tell people about water so I can I get will. to the. I can get to the big thick headlines because now. You've got me squashed down to three minutes for headlines. Now, Do you realize that? Because you had to fight with me. Chris Waters. What would happen if I if I squoze this way? If I squoze Bob down to three minutes of news and yeah. he could only Then the, the audience would be mad at you. Mm-hmm. They'd hate you <laughs> forever. Damn boy. Dang in now for some Damn boy. That's a thick ball. Thick headline. <laughs> Let's get into it. Some Austin area headlines. We have, uh, what, one and a half minutes to do this. All right. Oh, I Let's get it. Because done. Bob had to tell me that I don't know anything about my own body. He just said he had two doctors. Took him over a, two doctors over a week to even guess what it might Season be. Season six of the Netflix hit, <laughs> and I'm going to use air quotes around hit, The Circle has a local Austin contestant to root for. His name is Jordan Staff. Never heard of this show. How do I know the little circle? Chewie and his friends watch The Circle because they're young it, and single. Is it dating? It's about being popular, popular on the social internet. Media, yeah, yeah. If you're popular on social media, but you have an internal social media you have amongst yourselves, you can win a hundred grand. It's a game show. Hmm. Staff is a 25 year old photographer. He grew up in Victoria. He's uh, living in Austin now. There's a whole interview with him on Axios Austin. If you want to find out about it. Uh, he's a long time Austinite. He's been here since 2017. What? That's a true Austinite. Dang. Uh, episodes one through four land on Netflix tonight, and uh, you can watch episodes. Blah 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 blah. We're not going to give them a free advertising. They're Netflix. They got enough money. If they want to advertise, they can do it. Yeah, let us share again. I've started seeing these pop up everywhere. Like, if I try to turn into my HEB right now, when I try to make a left-hand turn, there's some weird-ass thing that they've built all around my my left-hand turn. It's got some yellow sticks sticking up in the air, and it looks like there's chunks of tire laying on the ground. I was like, what the hell is this? It turns out it's part of the city's Vision Zero initiative, and they've launched this pro. pro- basically, they want you to not cut corners you know how people haul ass through a left-hand turn, like the light's about to change, right. or and you haul ass really fast, and you kind of cut that angle to, mm-hmm. to quickly make that turn? What's happening is people are doing that, and they're looking at the oncoming traffic, and they don't realize people are in the crosswalk, oh, and they're hitting people in the crosswalk. Don't do that. As part yeah. of that, they want to slow people down on a left-hand turn, make it harder for you to make a quick left-hand turn before oncoming traffic. It also could save you from getting hit. 
The initial launch has 16 intersections. There's rubber speed cushions, delineated posts being set up to reduce wide, high-speed turns. They want you to slow down and make a tighter 90-degree turn. Hmm. Uh, I don't know how long before we start knocking down all those posts. I also don't know how long until my wife runs run over one of them and blows out a tire. Yeah. Mm. But thank you, City of Austin. I, I can't wait to buy yet another tire for my car. He needs it. He needs it. Um, can't the cars just go over those posts? God, my wife shared something with me, like a meme the other day. It was like... My car's been good. It deserves a little treat. I, what, so what if I feed a little curb now and then? And I was like, oh, that is... She said that? Yeah. That's, and I was pretty, like, that that's is, pretty funny. Because <laughs> it's what my wife does. Yeah. She, const- she constantly tells me, like, I don't know. Like, the, I don't know what happened. And I'm like, what, why are we installing all of these, cur- these mobile curves that jump out at your car? Mm. Curbs hater. And I've been mad for weeks because I'm like, somebody hit somebody that now twice has hit the van and there's all these but it's like a shopping cart or something that's run all the way side down the side of the car you think and the recent, curbs are fighting no, back no recently I heard talking to a friend about those sticks that stick up out of the you oh. know you know like for bike lanes and stuff and yeah, she was yeah. like oh yeah, yeah I hit one of those with the car. and I was like oh I heard her and I was like oh so that's what's going on I hate those things you're side swiping those damn things and those then th- I gotta get out there with a polisher and a bunch of rubbing compound and stuff to take that down Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She goes, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm only bringing this up not to belittle my wife, who's fantastic. My family would fall apart without her. I'm bringing it up because I think there are a lot of other men out there who have... She's got to be bad at something. You know, she's good at everything. Whose wives' cars are also occasionally attacked by these same things. Mm-hmm. Thought her, saw her doing a cooking video Your yesterday. Your show is sexist. Ooh, you, is uh, I don't know. I think she is she getting in the Just Prowl space? Oh, no. She was joking. She was showing it. Did you understand what she was cooking? I only saw the video. I, I watch your wife's videos with the sound down. I'm not on her And your pants, pants down. And my pants down. <laughs> and I, did, I, I didn't have no idea what she was talking about. I just saw her holding up a bag of Send raw chicken. It. I haven't subscribed to her. No, her that. joke was that she poured like some bottle craft dressing? salad dressing on chicken and was like, look at, look at me go. I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. I'll check out the sound next time. Uh, when I finish. <laughs> and finally, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry we can't have more headlines, but it was re- Bob was real busy letting me know that I don't know what's wrong with myself. No, I think we all learned how to doctor ourselves. Uh, yesterday, there was a test run of the new Zilker Eagle, which is the new train that's supposed to drive around Zilker Park. Not the Zilker Zephyr. Not the Zilker Bat or the Zilker Lightning, or anything that has to do with the city of Austin, the Zilker Eagle. You know how Austin's known for its eagles? Remember they had the contest to rename it? Was that what they came up with from the contest, or was that a whole different... It looks like it's going to run in an opposite circle from the way it used to run. Workers were doing a test run. The opening date, ladies and gentlemen, after five years, after five years of no train in the city, ladies and gentlemen, if you're ready... Officials say the opening date is not yet announced. Oh, not going to happen. The world has moved on from many trains. Like, you're going to see, when it does open, you're going to see a bunch of people on the train looking at their phone as they're going from, I don't we know where they're going. cannot get any kind of mass transportation in line in the city. No, not even the Eagle. We can't get it done. We can't get it done. Dallas, a town of big hair and money and cars, they have a working train. Houston, think of the amount of sprawling. They have a working train system. They get you from downtown to the medical center quite easily. We built a train from the convention center where if you're at the convention center, it's probably because you're in here from out of town. And you can hop on a train that then takes you to Leander. Mm. Ronnie Chang is going to be here as part of Moon Tower. So this is all Moon Tower week. I don't want to brag, but we have the James Adomian coming in here in uh, less than an hour. I don't know. He After his listening to us bicker, he may have turned around. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe James has had diarrhea at some point, and he'll be able to let us know something <laughs> about it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to go see Ronnie Chang, we have two. Count them. 
Two. One, no. two pair of tickets available right now. Call 512. Stroke brain. Anybody can anybody help me out with this oh, one? Oh, 8340937. Thank you. Uh, 512-8340937. And, and say diarrhea. And you can go see Ronnie Chang uh, as part of Moon Tower. He's going to be at Bass Concert Hall. And uh, there you go. How about that? That sound good, everybody? That sounds Enjoy. good. Oh, my God, that hurt. What happened? I was reaching to turn on my microphone. And what my happened? thumb, right where I cut that chunk out of it, oh, yeah. hit directly on... Oh, I've really been I didn't beat notice up over the, the last couple yeah. of weeks. I didn't notice yeah, the look bandage it. was off. Look how it, it healed in a weird way where... It, yeah, the skin's all pulled weird because I didn't go get stitches. Nah, screw it. I'll put Botox That's on That's what you get when you self-doctor. Yeah, look how like the nail is all. Yeah, yeah. Doctor would have taken care of that. I don't go to the doctor. You know that I about know, me. I know. I, You're I like to, pioneer man. the doctor in this? They churn, their there family is. churns their own butter and he does his own doctoring. Well, that's, that's pretty amazing. I feel like I'm watching Little House on the Prairie sometimes. Guess what? Not John I Boy. get that you and your family can run to the doctor whenever something's wrong. But my family, we use duct tape. I cut myself, <laughs> I put duct tape. I've got diarrhea, duct tape. Mm-hmm. Just whatever. Duct tape. <laughs> Everybody knows you're supposed to use a wine cork for that. I Can I tell you something right now? Yeah. There's no way I could use a wine cork. There's too much pressure. <laughs> And I would be, be like New Year's Eve. I would be accused of, of shooting and killing somebody. I don't oh, know what man, I, I have. I feel bad for we you. We have dude. nurses that listen to this show. You would think they would be calling, right? You would if think they would be like, out there, you got the Jumanji, man. How many days of... Okay, here's something I want to ask you. I just wanted to... I just now want to... Don't, you don't, don't have the regular right Jumanji. Look at me. Look you me got in the, the Kevin Hart Look me in the Jumanji. Eyes. Look me in the eyes, because I don't want anybody... Without looking... Chewy, spell diarrhea. Uh, D I A R H E A. H E A? Okay. Bob, spell diarrhea. No, no, no. Just spell it out loud. What are you trying? Are you trying to look at it and see how it looks? Yeah. By the way, Chewy? Yeah. You are incorrect. No, no, no. Look it up. I'm going to make you spell it again. Oh, I already looked it up. I think Watch it's two. It. I'm going to say D I A R R H E A. How did you do that? Because he looked I'm it Because I'm a doctor. Okay. I tried to put an O in it. I knew there were two H's or two R's, so I took a guess. I, I needed two R's. I needed an extra R. But you didn't do that. I did that. But is, how do I say it in Spanish? I'm... Diarrhea? Yeah. You have to roll those? Yeah, you got to roll them. I think for something that is so loose, it shouldn't be so hard to spell. Like, that's an impossible word to spell. And for something that we have in our life so frequently, it should be an easier... So we're saying it wrong. It's diarrhea. It should it's be... It's a dire... Right. Uh, moment. Hey, not dia. We say dia, but it's diarrhea. A dire deal is a stereo steel. steel. Who named it that? Who was the doctor diarrhea that I named don't know. it that? Yeah. I'm if sure you're it's a, Latin If you're a something. doctor or a physician's assistant or a, a nurse... Now, I know what's going to happen. We're going to have 30 people call up here that have no medical background whatsoever. <laughs> this little hickey. It's me, Dr. Dookie. <laughs> Here's what you need to do. Hey, you, Matt. You need to put your a thumb up there and don't cough. <laughs> but I'm wondering I'm how sorry, many man. days. I know you're miserable. How many days of straight, uncut Rhea. Are you uh, you hydrated? Can die you, from you, get, that. you can get dehydration really yeah, fast. Yeah, you can. From that. I think you can. Drink so make sure you're rate. drinking a lot of water. You want to get your power rate? Get some from media me? light. I've been drinking uh, like tons of like uh, tequila, bourbon, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I think I'm pretty high. I'm saying pretty high. Can we go flight. to the doctor line? Oh, is this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, diarrhea hotline. Doctor? Yeah, hi. Um, I just wanted to know if you know what they call a vegan with diarrhea. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Salad shooter. <laughs> oh. We are so in trouble. Thank you very much, doctor. Thank you, thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. <laughs> thank you, doctor. <laughs> Never gets oh, old. Man. <laughs> I can't go home today. I cannot go home. Don't today do it. Because our <sighs> Whoever thought building an ensuite bathroom was a good idea is an idiot. 
It had to have been a single person or it someone with no kids. It had to have been a single person. Because you always, that's the thing, is that you try to grow up to one day get enough money to have an ensuite bathroom in your, it, which we no longer call a master bedroom. Now we call it the main bedroom. Primary. Primary bedroom. And the whole thing is, is if you're a fancy pants person, you actually have a bathroom inside of your bedroom, right? Attached to your mm-hmm. bedroom. My previous home didn't. It's down the hall and... And it was the same bathroom that any guest used. We had one bathroom in the house. Still only have one bathroom in the house. Is that right? But is that before or after the butter churning room? <sighs> That's outside. We're not. I don't understand why you decided that we're hippies. It's like a pioneer farm over there. <laughs> and so we have an ensuite, ensuite bathroom. And here's the thing. <laughs> this more, My wife doesn't get up at the same time I do. Right. And there's no way I can ever yeah. look her in the eye again. If you blow out the cotton, yeah. After this, no, it wasn't even, I'm telling you right now, these are not, I don't care how many hey, don't you analog st- and digital pedals you put together right. and how many Moog and sound effects machines, you could not repeat yeah. what happened and this don't morning. Don't you still have the bat one bathroom that's got police tape on it that you put rolled furniture in front of? Correct. So you're really hurting. You should. Is there a Motel Six near you? If I had Maybe gone should to run a, out of room for a couple. Here's days. the problem. If I had gone to a Motel Six and done what I did, by the time I got out, there would have been EMS there because somebody would have heard and thought, "Well, that's clearly uh, clearly a domestic." <laughs> Ooh, there's a domestic dispute. Go to one of those Lynn Dempsey places on. and hit the Japanese toilet. Uh, I They'll believe. Know what to do. Yeah, I believe I have food poisoning. Bob believes since I had contact with children, that's where my illness came from. It's been five days. They're walking, you know, whatever. And, and, you and it is. I mean, I try to stay away from the. General I'm not trying public. to be gross because you can't. You're not allowed to be gross on the radio because then the FCC comes and gives you a letter and says st- you destroyed our community. Look, our community no. is fishing bodies out of town lake every seven or eight days. We're not worried we about. We're worried not about. about. Uh, we're not worried about Ronnie Bun's conversation. Okay, FCC. We should have a phone line full of doctors. Where's our Dookie Hauser? Let's go. <laughs> doctor? Not a doctor. Okay. Not well, a doctor hotline. But, but I will say, uh, given five days, I would definitely look up C. diff and get yourself checked. If you have C. diff, you will need antibiotics to get rid of it. And it is not pleasant. <laughs> See, isn't C. diff but the thing that... A lot- See, that's the thing that kills you, right? Where they have to do, where they have to do a fecal implant or something. Only if you get it more than once. Okay, don't start putting this yeah. stuff in my head. Did you have C diff? I, I went through it. I've had it, and it is not fun. Um, How'd you I'm get it? That I don't get it. Uh, I've got, I'm on lifetime antibiotics. So lifetime antibiotics. antibiotics. That's a thing. What the? Yes. Don't scare Matt now. Oh Jesus Christ, dude. Scaring me. Well, I've got, I've got stage four cancer as well as some other things. Did so you get the cancer time, from the C diff? Oh boy. No, it was a byproduct of the the cancer and the medications. But C diff is not fun. It does sound like it's something like that with the the many days. Okay. Legit question for you, sir. Events. Legit question for you. What is what? What in your opinion is worse? Stage four cancer. Or unstoppable diarrhea. Unstoppable diarrhea. There you go. Wow. So when my wife, when I go home today and complain and she goes, stop acting like this. It's not like you have cancer. I'm going to tell her. A cancer patient. A cancer patient. With stage four cancer. Now, stage four, like, that's 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 not like getting the higher number is not the good thing, right? Right. We don't build our way up. But you can still do stuff with a stage. Like, there's a lot of... The survival rate's getting climbing higher. No, my survival rate's rather low. (laughs) All right. Well, there's a rate. There's a rate, sir. Okay? (laughs) This is why I love the show that we have, because I love somebody with gallows humor that's going to call us and go, hey, stop trying to make me feel better. I know who I am and what I'm going through and what I'm dealing with. I had a buddy that survived. Stage four. Don't say yeah, butt in front of this guy that. either. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Hang in there, man. Any other maladies that you have that you haven't listed? Um, the liver issues, the heart problem. Mm, okay, dude, this is this is depressing. Not for you, but we 
we're trying to keep high ratings, and we don't need our listeners being taken out by cancer, okay? Well, get yourself checked. Don't do what I do and wait until you're 38 and feel like you have bowel obstruction. Oh, finally go to the oh my Man. God, dude. Son of a... Go to the doctor when you feel anything. I'm going today. <laughs> it's always a fart, though. Every time I've checked. I, I'm not allowed to have farts right now. I am so sick no. in a way that when I try to get out of a chair, I have to I have to be very careful how to get out of the chair or it's new underwear Sounds time. Like Don't Sounds stop like doing C-diff. that, sir. No, it's <laughs> not. No, it's not. It's B-diff. How about that? It's stage B diff. Oh, that sounds too much like bean dip. All right. Hey, why don't you see diff nuts on your chin? <laughs> John, give us a call back. Hey, yeah, come yeah, out to our, you one on. of our podcasts and stuff. Matt, right? I want to give you All a little right, we'll s- silver lining, a little good news, okay? Because think about it. Let's look at the bright side of this, all right? If you had had this on that day at the beach, you had to take that all everybody dresses in white oh, photo. That would have been, been a tragedy. See, you're they, finding the positives, and I appreciate they you. They would have had to dig a hole out there. For in you. fact, did you get in the water? This is two weeks after. Now you said it takes two weeks to get these things. Did and the you amoeba? Get, did you up? get in the water at the beach? No. Did you submerge your bunghole? What no. did you eat at the beach? At down the there? beach, what did I eat? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, one of the meals I ate part of my thumb. Because I don't know how to use knives. I think there was some potato I'm really falling there. apart here. I, but, here but here's the weird thing. Michael Riley says Mint. don't. He spent 50 bucks on tickets for Saturday. So don't. So don't what? Die? Yeah. Okay. I'm not trying to. The, here's a, here is a thing I will tell you. Not eating for five days. The mental clarity I have right now is, is unbelievable. That's what we've been telling you. great. You said fast. I have not felt this good and alive. In, in quite some time, there is a little thing about like the weird dizziness, and then I and everything's a little blurry. Ah, but know. other that's than vitamins, that, that's vitamins. I feel like uh, I feel uh, yeah. brisk. Yeah. I feel uh, happy. I feel like uh, embracing. Because your stomach shut down. Drink yeah. a Powerade; it'll be okay. Okay, uh, doctor. Yeah. What's up? Um, I was just thinking, uh, maybe Chewy's trying to steal your wife. Yeah, you stroke on there. And now this, maybe it's put arsenic in your drink or something. Okay. Oh. And you and, and where where did you go to medical school, sir? Uh, I did not. Well, it's weird. It's weird that back. you called on the doctor hotline, but you didn't go to medical. So you got a doctor degree without medical school? Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. If you cool. would be a doctor, what would you say would be your specialty? Oh, I'd probably be a guy now. Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, good, bro. Yeah, you yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I'd be a bits doctor. Show them to me. All right, they look good. I wouldn't want to be there because once you see it in that yeah. light, then it's like not fun. You know, it's like bringing work home. <laughs> type thing. It's chewy. I think. Poison. Yeah. All right. All right. No, I would have finished the job. Thank you, sir. That's a good theory, though. Both no. times, the last two times you've gone on vacation, you've come up with serious illness. I gotta look up C diff. You know what? Right? C diff is. What I think you did get in the water. That sounds fun. Up C, to the waist. No, it's a, C diff is what Tig got. And oh, the last time, the last time I was on the road with Tig, she told me that this she she said the same thing because you know she had had cancer, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And she said that C diff was the worst thing she'd gone through, and that never one ever wanted to do it again. So I've had battles for my life on the toilet. Like, I know for sure. I'm like, I'm going to die here alone right now. But then the next day, I was perfectly fine. I was like, I just needed that to mm-hmm. happen for whatever. Two hours, three hours of fighting. C. diff results from the disruption of normal, ha- healthy bacteria in the colon. See, you need probiotics, bro. Diarrhea, belly pain, upset, sets, and diarrhea. What was that? Yeah. That's- Treatment includes antibiotics. And realizing that your wife will leave you, you need yogurt uh-huh. and a Powerade or something. No, I no get that. Go straight for the what they give to the kids, the Pedialyte. Pedialyte. In, in some cases, fecal transplant surgery may be needed, and that's oh, what when does they that take, mean? They take somebody else's duke and they put it inside of you. So you can have my bacteria. Would you take mine if I offered? I had a lot in this freezer. <laughs> <laughs> Caller. 
Was it like sourdough no. starter? They got to <laughs> hey, keep it fresh. What, what are they putting in your intestine, yes, man? doctor, doctor. <laughs> doctor. So, let me ask you this. What? Have you, have you smoked any kind of marijuana mm. the last couple of days? Huh? Well, I was going, oh, last couple of days, no. Why? Wait, wait. Wait, cause, can I get... This, no, this is why. And I don't... No names, please. Okay. Okay, no, doctor. <laughs> yeah, we don't recognize your voice. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. names, please. Okay. We've, we've, right. ne- we've never talked to you, and you don't have a recognizable voice, so don't worry about it, doctor. Let's change your name All to right. Pete. So, this is the deal. I had stomach... I was pumping gas one day. Stomach started hurting for no reason. Went in there... Sweating, and it just about killed me. Started happening, started happening, started happening, more and more. Every time I went to the emergency room, they would ask me that question. You smoke weed? Yep. <laughs> they just wanted to know if you had any on you. Yeah. I think the giant pot leaf tattoo on your neck <laughs> should have answered the question. No. No, but, and so I was getting upset because that ain't nobody's business if it was or I wasn't. Ma'am, right. Especially not no doctor who's about to give me medication. CIA uh, doctor agent. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so after about, after about the seventh time, they kept on asking me. I got pissed off, da 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 and That's weird. You don't sound like a guy who's ever been aggravated in your life. <laughs> or that has smoked. So come to find out. There's all the new kind of marijuanas that are out there. I'm allergic to them, and that's what was causing my stomach. What? So you yeah. ha- so, so you, you can know. only smoke vintage marijuana? <laughs> that's the most hipster thing oh, I've ever marijuana heard. Marijuana classic. That's yeah. it. That's all I well, can do. That's, marijuana that's classic. A Not that new marijuana. That's, I can't have the new. <laughs> <laughs> that's a theory, but I haven't tried it since, man. I, I got away from it because it was literally killing me. I'm allergic to it with all the new chemicals and the way that they do things now. So I couldn't play with it no more. But it, 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 I haven't tried. I had a lot of buddies of mine say, "Yeah, man, you need the old uh, red hair, the you know, the old skunk weed. That's what you need." Well, I'm like, man. Well, here's the thing about all that nasty weed from you know wherever we got it from. I think we got a lot from Mexico back in the day, but it was it right. was full of pesticides. I'm pretty positive, and all kinds of stuff like that. Well, it came from those are called flavoring <laughs> agents. <laughs> All right, there he goes. All right. All right. Well, thanks, whoever you are, anonymous. Yeah, thank you. There you go, man. Hey, yep. We kept you anonymous. <laughs> I love the, the dude. Do some people not realize that they just come off a of stoner? So the first time you say hello yeah. to them, not Have me. Have you ever? I'm not. I'm going to pretend that we don't immediately recognize his name, and that every single one of our listeners doesn't immediately recognize that caller. Mm-hmm. Does he think that he comes off as a uh, a straight edge, straight arrow, uh, <laughs> Boy Scout. He's still from a time when that was a very, very bad thing. And I know, so he I has know. that in his they mind. It broke a lot of our brains, didn't it? Yeah, I'm still broken. I mean, we should be able to smoke this 420 outside on the sidewalk. Imagine smoking weed in the streets you, without cops when you go to, right on, When man, you go to right a place on. that has dispensaries, as hey. much weed as you smoke, when you go to a place that has a dispensary, do you still feel guilty going into a dispensary? Yeah, yeah. And, and in, in Vegas, too, wherever I go, yeah. I don't. I don't know why. It's Are Texas. there any other doctors on the? I love that we ask for only doctors or nurses or physicians assistants. We do have a doctor on the line. Okay. Doctor, hi. Hi, this is Doctor Pepper. What's up, Doc? You there? Yeah. That's you, buddy. What's up? Have you tried rubbing an egg on your stomach? Mm. <laughs> now that is man, man, what is that what culture is that sana sana colita de rana you put rub an egg yeah, on your stomach exactly you could break it and cook it somewhere else and it'll take the disease away from you you put it my oh, family yeah, that put it, uh, my family would put it in a mug with a couple of broken toothpicks and put it under the bed oh okay is that what I need to do works every time sorry sir have you tried yeah. rubbing an egg on your phone I don't know. I guess I need to reset the phone. I have never heard this egg phone. thing. You've never heard the egg thing? No. You, gr- you take a, do, explain it again in I'm case so I have to remember it. I'm so confused how you grew up in a Hispanic family and you have you don't know any of these things. 
You use paste picante at your house. My dad was telling me to stop being a pussy. There was, I rem- I'll tell you, I'll go through the thing. I think there was one time when we were scared for Cat. one of my little cousin's soft spots. So you hang them by the feet here and you hit the bottom of their feet. Okay. Like that? Yeah, have you tried grounding? Uh, there's another one where you lay with the top sheet of your blankets and then we dust you with the broom. Yeah, you got to do the broom thing. You got to dust you sana, with the broom. Sana. I think that gets all the evil out. No, I never heard stuff. of that. What's the thing where they do where they do a pin above, like, they put a pin on a thread? And that's, then just, that's Italian. That's to see if you're pregnant. Oh, that's Italian? We yeah. did that too, but we did it with like a saint. And whatever those uh, mm-hmm. medallion yeah. thing is. That's to figure out also. Is it a raw egg? egg? What do we? What egg yeah. do we? Take a raw egg. You take a raw egg. Now do you have to say anything. You said you had to say mecca lecca high. Mecca. There's a lot of different sayings. Wow. I'm not an. Uh, here's the thing. I'm not an abuela, so I don't really want to speak. I'm not an expert on this. Gotcha. gotcha. So I don't want to speak to it, but I don't actually know. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't dabble in the dark arts. Yeah. Yeah, I know. What do you have to give up for that? Like. If that does work, now somebody, like a spirit, owns you or something. That's right? true. Like, um, it's like going to the crossroads, right? You'll learn how to play guitar really good, but the devil owns your soul. What do you have to give up if you do the Mexican arts like that? If it works. Uh, you have to give up uh, a cop accept- accepting the fact that you say you're a citizen. Mm. Sorry, I went Sorry. way too long for that, that joke. Yeah. Okay. I went That's way right. too far for it. But I'm also, remember, I'm dehydrated. I've had uh, Rhea for days. We'll blame the Rhea. I wonder if Cookie Greg could bring us some uh, Pedialyte for you and a bunch of cookies for us. Hey, is did I just right hear? Now. Is Adomi in here early? Yeah, he's in. Yeah. The, he's in. The, oh, that's fantastic. He's in the cafe. Let's, we can bring him in early, probably. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll ask him. I, I'll, I'll he ask might him. be warm, we but we want to respect his time. Right. James Adomian, who's not only going to be at Moon Tower, but we've managed to get into the studio. Who I'm telling you right now, I know some of you may not be familiar because you, you know you're 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 a, a casual consumer of comedy. Anybody who's a comedy fan, he's way up there in that uh, that tight group of people that you look at where they go, oh, not only hilarious but a comics comic and all that kind of stuff. So uh, he's going to be in here in a second. Speaking of um, the uh, festival, Ronnie Chang tickets. We have to cut, stop calling him Ronald Chang. Who's a friend of the show, Ronnie. Chang tickets uh, can go out right now. 512-834-0937. 512-834-0937. Uh, be one of the first two callers. We have two pair of those tickets to give away right now. Mornings with Matt and Bob are powered by Chewy. Yeah, uh, we are. Online, Matt and Bob FM. Yeah. And uh, Moon Tower, we, you know we've been talking about it as it's been approaching for the last couple of weeks. And it's here. I mean, I guess it's been here because they do 10 days of it or whatever. But you know what I mean? What My p- favorite part is what they call the club shows area. That started, it starts today, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And it's my favorite time because I, I understand that people want to go see, oh, I, that person was on a show. He's a celebrity mm-hmm. at the Big Giant Bass. No offense to – that's not directed at, at Ronnie. I just mean that I love club uh, – to me, I comedy will always be comedy when I can be in a room with a low ceiling. One of the best clubs for comedy, and I wish they do more comedy there, is something called Parker Jazz Club. We're going to get up there because Mr. James Adoman has uh, has joined us, and he's joining us early. Good morning, James That's Adomian. right. Thank you so much. Yes. Welcome I'm back. Here. I'm here in Austin. Uh, I'm here for Moon Tower. And specifically, I'm here Thursday for Parker Jazz Club. Uh, you're going to do your full hour at the, at the Parker Jazz Club. Yes. I. The, so this is years ago. It's the first year I got into... The first year I went to uh, Bridgetown, right, and I felt pretty good about myself getting a, getting into Bridgetown. I was going, and uh, very first show I had, I was I got to close a show, right? That's exciting. And one of the, it was one of those Bridgetown is a fun comedy show that was whittled together by uh, six or seven people who had seven dollars between them, right? Yeah, and, and it was in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, and the whole thing is when you showed up, they're like, "Oh, this is the venue." When you showed up, the venue are like, "Is this a, a, a Brothers in Arms Hall or something?" Like it was just weird, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. It was just oh. cobbled together in places, which made it fun because it was sort of literally like someone was like, oh, my dad's got a barn. Let's start a comedy show. Literally, there was like, you know, it was on the, a lot of the venues were on Hawthorne there in Portland and they yeah. had like big music venues and then some bars where yeah. you're like, okay, I guess you can stack some chairs up and that's a stage. Yeah. And then across the street, the one you're talking about was, I think it was a, I don't remember, was it a Moose Lodge or VFW? a VFW hall? Yeah. Oh, no, I went to that one too. <laughs> this was... I was down the hall, but there were three shows going on, but it felt like I was in an elementary school. I didn't know what was going on. And I'm, perf- I'm about to go up. And you get nervous because 
Now, okay, there's a couple of national acts that have, that I have never crossed paths with, mm-hmm. and they're going to see me in the back of the room, and and, and you, you get timid, oh, other comics are going to want, and right before I go up, someone goes, hey, Adomian's about up, Adomian's about up, and the effing room clears, and mm-hmm. everyone goes down the hall to watch this this egomaniac piece of ass <laughs> do his Jesse Ventura impressions, and I suddenly am performing to like six people, and I got to do t- twenty five minutes. Wow! And I'm like, I don't know who James Adomian is, <laughs> but if I ever meet him, yeah, I'm not going to be very nice. Jesus! Uh, wow! Did I went, <laughs> And so, but that's what you know. That's one of those things that you that sticks with you because I'm like the, whoever this guy is, and, and we have common friends. Uh, Michelle Balloon is somebody who's a huge fan, and she was always like, "Oh my God, you'll love James. You'll love James. He's great." And you are you're you're personable. You're kind. You've never been an asshole to anybody. I mean, maybe you have, but never to me or anybody. And I went and watched you, and I was like, "Oh, I get it. This guy's amazingly fun. The way that you channel characters." <laughs> is absolutely insane. So now we're done Back with in those the, days. I was probably doing George Bush or something. You do. You, you were. You were doing something where you you were doing some Ventura and you yeah. were doing some other. You did Over like at two. The hideout. Yeah, the and hideout. you did two other characters that night. And then at one point you were debating yourself with something. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just want to get both sides of the facts. <laughs> What's happening? We're talking about keep Portland weird. That's what I heard about Austin. Yes, we that did. means there's the same message that they're putting out there for two entirely different municipalities. <laughs> I'm a former mayor. I am a former executive branch of a city. And you're telling me to keep it weird? That sounds like the agenda of the Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> this is a thing about you. Whenever I see somebody saying, I, I have kids now and I have uh, fellow parents and we talk and they say, well, I'm worried about Kevin or something. And we're, we're talking to a, we may need to do ADHD drugs. And I think... Why would you take away their chance to become a unsatisfied comedian? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm, that's kind of true. Why would you steal right. that joy from them? Because you are we? Did you? How much trouble are you in as a kid growing up? Yeah, this, it, it, good point. This is an art form that's fueled by ADHD. It is. We just didn't have the letters for it back and then. And insecurity, and, 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 right? and, and, and spectrum, yeah. and spectrum disorders. It, those are the, that, that's that's what keeps comedy going. <laughs> and I think where we get upset sometimes as comics is when you meet a comic who doesn't have any of those things and has success. You're annoyed by that kind of person because you're like you don't belong in the business. One, yeah, one of those guys also has iron shirts. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Those will go hand in hand. You're like, why are you here? You're well adjusted and your parents are married. This isn't your line of work. This yeah. is rude to steal this from us. You guys win, right? You guys out there winning, you know, like I'm winning lately, you know, and that's fine. I win. What? what? <laughs> A, a comic who's got everything together. <laughs> your show is going to... Do you know what time your show is, is yes, tomorrow? Yes, I have to. Well, what is... Is today Wednesday? Today yeah. is Wednesday. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. That changes some things. <laughs> uh, I, I forgot what time I got here a couple nights ago. I'm uh, 7 p.m. Thursday at okay. the Parker Jazz Club. Great time for a show, too. Yeah. That means that a lot of our listeners who are old... <laughs> do you... You can't... You can't live the same lifestyle you used to live, right? I was trying, and now, like, I, you know, I laughed, and it split something open in my <laughs> abdomen. Mm, mm. I, la- I, la- I injured myself from laughing. Okay. Uh, How's that? That's a, that's a work-related injury. Ah! <laughs> You're going to do it to me again! Yeah. <laughs> and then you realize, you realize, like, all the old, like, uh, all, like, like, you're killing me! Stop it! Like, oh, no, yeah, you could, <laughs> you could hurt yourself from this stupidity. <laughs> The, 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 I tried. I tried to. I really try to chase the dragon. Literally, if anybody has heroin, that's what I'm aiming for. But uh, we've got it in the city. Do, great, do, great. <laughs> are, are you a napper at all? I used to be. That was that was smarter. Mm, yeah. And I somehow fell off the naps. Really? And now, yeah. I, I, those were the glory days. They're addicting. That's the most addicting thing. Because now I, I can't fall asleep because there's so much going on that I'm like. Uh, I, I'll try to take a nap and just worry the whole mm. hour and a half or whatever. That's what a nap is for, isn't it? Is it yeah. to, to gather all the horrific thoughts for the rest of the day? <laughs> in, case, in case the morning part kind of uh, wash that away? Yeah. What, what are we going to, uh, what all's going on in your hour right now? Mm. Because you're, you're, not a, you're not a guy who gets up, 
starts out with a, a little bit of a simple crowd work and a, a local joke and then runs through a very highly memorized set. That's not what we will see the from mo- James Adobe. Mostly, well, here's the here's what you should know. I forget the jokes. <laughs> I forget the material. And specifically, more than anything, I forget what was supposed to be funny or why they're there. Right. Yeah. So, is that why you're in a jazz club? Yes. Tomorrow? <laughs> That's what jazz is, right? I, I the, forgot the melody. It's about the jokes right? that don't work. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to be doing comedy jazz tomorrow yeah. night. It, uh, it's, exactly. It's the lines in between the punchlines or the true punchlines. <laughs> Um, you know, good question. Uh, yeah, I, I don't do I don't do the crowd work unless something's gone terribly wrong. There's I, a where it's like, what do you do? Because I this is I, I, I'm either impressed with people or I'm afraid of them. So <laughs> I'm like, you know, what do you do for a living? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a medical device sales. Oh, uh, uh, why? Uh, that's a useful part of our society. <laughs> Not much humor in there. Thank Moving you. on. Thank you for your service. Well, I'm I'm, I'm still I'm, I have an uh, uh, an hour special that hasn't come out yet that I'm still uh, sitting on, and there's some new stuff since I recorded it. But there's a lot of stuff. From the special still floating around in my set. When is uh, when's the special coming out? Uh, this year, it's called Path of Most Resistance. Okay, like it, oh. and uh, it's going to be out on eight hundred pound gorilla. Oh, perfect. And uh, so, what am I talking about? What am I talking? What's what's on the palette? What's on the platter here for Lord Jesus? Um, there's a uh, current affairs. Um, nice non current affairs. We have a pando chunk. A p- <laughs> I mean, everybody does. I not, tried. The last time I think we it's saw too, you was just before the. Pando. I think it might be. Too, is it too late for the pando chunks? You know, the most I tried not to do. Too, I not. I, I cut out a couple pandemic pandemic jokes um, from the special because I didn't want to lean into it. Right. Because I realized like nobody talks about the Spanish flu. Nobody, cause as, right? And a lot. Everyone went through it, and there's never been a movie about it. No I'm one ever talks about it. Still new comedy specials released where people are wearing masks. In the audience, uh, like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. because it's they held them too long. It's kind of a down. Well, they I held was, it. I was proud to be a super spreader event because yeah. I was like, take those masks off, you right dumb. now. <laughs> get, get not in my show. <laughs> not in my show. Not in my show. Put them and, away. I'm sorry, I'm on stage. I got loose teeth and stuff. I got gaps in my teeth. I spit. But I was like, you, t- I, you <laughs> take your mask off. Put in those lockable pouches. <laughs> put your mask in a lockable I him, pouch. I made like him throw, a him, throw him in the trash. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and no recycling either. <laughs> You're, are you in L.A. right now? Yeah, I'm in L.A. Because California still, I mean, we're in Texas where the pandemic never hit. Uh, it literally apparently didn't exist because right. that's how we run things here. I came um, down here. Like, I came down here. Like, this is like the first place I was able to do a show after the pandemic. And I could tell I was like, oh, they never stopped. <laughs> it's funny because you'll hear people go, after the lockdowns. And I'm like, what? What lockdown do you mean? There was like a week where a we week. were all too drunk to get out of bed, but that's not a lockdown. That's just a hangover <laughs> and too much of a party. It was a, a revisit to college days. Just or you something. had to spend extra time with your wife. Didn't make it a <laughs> lockdown. A- I mean, that's that's extreme. Yeah, uh, lockdown with a ball and chain. <laughs> are you gonna? Uh, are you prepared? Because you, uh, I don't want to say you. You do. You touch in politics, but in a very different way. You- touch into politics. What I like to do is bring up something like an intelligent, important topic for the culture and society and then have the just the dumbest idea but, about it possible. And, and I think that that's kind of beautiful because it does politics, especially after the last, I don't know, what are we at? Like eight, nine, mm-hmm. ten years of ridiculousness. I think it just makes people's uh, buttholes clamp shut. <laughs> and they get so weird about it now that they have a hard time even laughing about stuff. And I love that you treat it, which is the realistic thing is we... The core of it is all of us as individuals have essentially very little power. And, and when you accept that, your life will get better. This is something I realize where, uh, it's, I, 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 <laughs> where I'm, I'm like, well, we don't, I don't, I, I understand the rules. Uh, we don't get to vote on some things. The machines take over. And right. that's, that's, the, I understand, I get it. There's overlords. If I, if I say something next to a wall or uh, uh, any device, then I get advertised about whatever I'm talking about for the rest of my life. Um, I understand the rules, but yeah, there, uh, th- uh, there's um, some some issues out there that are very important and very, I think, appeal to like both sides. Oddly enough, yeah. yeah. And one of them that I have talked about recently is the uh, you might have heard this the trillion dollar coin. There's this actual proposal, right? To mint a trillion dollar coin, mint a trillion dollar coin. So I get into this <laughs> and the special because. Um, you're like, 
this is an interesting idea. And it's like, it's there's both right wing and left wing people that are like on board with the trillion dollar coin idea. Platinum, a platinum coin worth a trillion dollars. Yeah. And, and the background for that is that it would essentially eliminate a chunk of the debt, right? The whole debt. Wipe it out because then the Federal Reserve Bank would be forced to buy this platinum coin that's minted by the U.S. Mint. Right. Um, and here's my one big my one big request is it cannot be a regular coin size coin. You cannot have like mm-hmm. something that's like a silver dollar size thing. You have to have the gravitas. Like a novelty check. Scale. No, it has to be like large, heavy, huge coin. So that it's unwieldy and hefty and clumsy. Like a manhole cover. Yes, for the two (laughs) idiot workmen who are hired to carry it across the street. (laughs) Like the the 1940s stooges, Laurel and Hardy type morons. Like, hey, careful, you moron. It's a trillion dollars. (laughs) (laughs) Say, boss, uh, how much is a trillion dollars anyway? It's a million million. Don't you know math? (laughs) <laughs> is, and then, of course, it rolls into the river. <laughs> is there any chance that when the two of them are carrying it across the street, can we also have a 1970s car chase movie come through and as they come over the hills in San Francisco? Yeah, watch it slow down! Why are they locomotive? I've never seen anybody carrying a giant plate of glass right. or hanging a banner a road. across a road <laughs> and on a giant ladder, and now here comes Steve McQueen and Bullet. <laughs> I don't know why, why that was that, always the, always the, like the a, contact we had. Now you know nobody. Do, 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 do they? Uh, when's, when's the last time they did a good car chase scene in Austin? Or are they all just stuck in traffic? <laughs> <laughs> they, could, they could not film it. There's no way they could yeah. film it. Uh, the last uh, one was uh, I was an extra in it. Peter Fonda did a movie here, and it was weird to see a car chase movie in the city that you live because the roads don't. Work. They make a left hand turn and all of a sudden they're at the they're on Congress. They make a left hand turn and they're at the lake. Well, even the even Slacker does that. Yeah, where they where you're like, no, you you're know? not. You're city. You got the city turn. It was called Outlaw Blues. They do that in because uh, I know L.A. very well, yeah. and they do that in uh, well, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, to the point where I was like, is that a joke? Is he trying to make it wrong? Yeah, <laughs> is this is this actually David Lynch, <laughs> not Quentin Tarantino? But yeah, he'll yeah. be Brad Pitt driving around the valley, and then he signals, and nope, now he's in Santa Monica. What? <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel your day is in uh, in La La Land? Um. What 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 did you just produce from behind you? What is that? Oh, this is I was wearing. This, this is my it was this my shirt. shirt. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this is my great Orson Welles sleight of hand. <laughs> this is like what? Now, before what? your very eyes, you'll see this wad of fabric become an overshirt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the magic of overshirts. Okay, so your uh, friend. <laughs> do you have do you have like fun and hobbies? You're on KLBJ. Terrestrial radio. You, you really don't want me to read this, do you? No, yeah, I'm staying out of it. I realize now in your head somewhere. Yeah. We have to get your rhythm. Because <laughs> we've been fighting about diarrhea all morning. <laughs> and so we have to get in tune. We know a little we know a little place in central Texas where diarrhea is on the menu, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh yeah, it has been. Um and then well, we won't get into that. You asked, you asked me how I fill my days in Los Angeles. Yes. Yeah. I do a lot of walking. I don't own a car. At all. No, I, I can rent one when I want one, but I I walk places. <clears throat> um, if I have to be somewhere fast, I'll get a Lyft or Uber. And uh, Where are you walking? In the hills? Up there by the... Yeah, that's by my... The, uh, 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 LA's not a walk. Yeah. I do walk through the Gibbons Observatory for a hike, yes. No, but I, I, I walked I, up I there. Live right, I live near there. Okay. And so, I, the, like... Beautiful. I live... Like in Los Feliz, just adjacent to Hollywood and Silver Lake, so there's a lot of places I could walk where I live. Um, nice. Basically, it's <laughs> I've got like a Central Austin type, uh, nice. downtown Austin type uh, setup with in my LA life. Uh, it's not a walking city. No, it's not, but it's a walking neighborhood. That's great. You know, that's the thing they call, I guess, the 15 minute neighborhood thing that every, uh, a lot of people are up in arms about. Yeah. Folks, they're trying to do it to us. The 15 minute neighborhoods. They're 15 minute open air prisons, is what they are. That is what you were doing at Bridgetown. I just remembered what it was. What, Alex it, Jones? Yeah. Folks, folks, we've got information here. I haven't been allowed on the air at KLBJ uh, over, over a decade, folks. They won't allow the kind of truth what we were putting out there. But we have evidence. We have evidence that Moon Tower has actually been funded by the Bilderberger Foundation. 
Build a burger. Build the builder burgers. The water burgers. Build a bear. Build a bear. Build a burger and water burger, folks. They got together. There's a conglomerate. They've got together. With George Soros. George Soros is behind the radio personalities on KLBJ, who is responsible for the assassination of KJFK. <laughs> I have to take a moment with that one. Uh, Did you know there's a website called BehindTheVoiceActors.com? And you're on it. Oh, really? Yeah, right there. Look. <laughs> Behind the Voice Actors. Bum, bum, bum. Got that sounds your... like it should be more ominous of a website. I'm looking at it, and it's kind of like... No, it's it, it's Microsoft 88 or whatever. You know, it's like... <laughs> little ads that are like, click on here to buy more shirts. But it, when you hear behind the voice actors, you want some scandal to it, don't you? Yes. Bum, bum, bum. And they've uh, rated your favorite, their favorite Which voices is? you do? They're like, when he shuts up, that's our, that's the highest rated one. You're 60% <laughs> Bane. Oh, wow. Wow. Followed by, uh, you know, Jones. <laughs> now, the one you just did is 13%. They got you covered, man. Who knew you had the rating system? I didn't know that at all. And you're trending at the 460th voice actor this week. Oh, we got to get that up. Come on. Now, why would you also... That's a backhand <laughs> compliment, a, what you did just uh, now. Trending. Also, that's the earliest headshot of me that can be found. Right. Wait. That's, that's me, you? That's me at 25. Oh, look, I'll show no, you, that's I'll show you not picture. you. Yeah, that's, that's what you used to look like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, good. folks, if you're, if you're not sure, that's what it sounds like when someone thinks you look really good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, that, I've never known a look at this shot. That James Adomi. Look at this Arrow Flynn looking mf -er here. Yeah. Look that, at that. That was, the, that was the one. That was the look. Oh, no, that, see, that's who I, I think I first kind of knew maybe was that guy. Or do you want help with that microphone? It's, it's not being polite to you, I have it? messed it up. Is it okay? It's no, right. we'll send you a right? bill. Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> we'll send you a bill. We can, see, we can still hear you. It's, it's all still there. I don't know. It's all still working. Do people you... shout out stuff at your show? Like, no, because your big fans like do this or do that or uh, oh, dance? That, okay. That used to happen when okay. I was more popular and funnier. <laughs> um, no, but now they're just like now they're just like I don't. What is he going to do next? Like yeah, they're looking. Yeah, they're like, honey, we have Kyle Kinane tickets <laughs> after this. <laughs> I don't think that that's true. I'm going to so be honest either. with you. Um, uh, I'm not going to just try to blow smoke up your ass the the entire time you're here. But you, I, I do want my listeners to know our listeners. I keep trying to. Look, I've gotten this habit recently. Be inclusive, right? Of, well, of saying my like I own them. And um, there, one of my favorite parts, you guys like Kendler as well, where you're constantly breaking down the construct of what I'm watching. And it's not just a straight show, and I don't know what's going to happen at any point. And uh, I like occasionally when you sometimes just get in a fight with yourself on stage. Andy Kindler. Oh, I, I love to do that, <laughs> and I love when he does it, too. Uh, <laughs> I love – one of my favorites is when Andy Kindler does the uh, – he'll, he'll – He'll dump on other comedians, yes. uh, past and present. And uh, I, 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 I was making fun of him sometimes because he was laying into Louis C.K. or something like that. You know, uh, what, so I'm the bad guy that I saw everything <laughs> coming before the thing happened? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like you just want him to keep going like, Richard Pryor, what's wrong? You think you, R R Richard previously was already taken? <laughs> <laughs> I miss Andy. I miss, well, we I think did this Andy, show so much yeah. in the '90s, in the old days. Well, Andy, Andy is going to be here on you know, on Friday. Andy hasn't left his house in five years. He's I mean, come on the show. And, and COVID came along, and Andy, Andy was not somebody who should be sequestered to his own home permanently. Anyway, it's not good for his brain. And then it was just him and Twitter, and it his it his. Really rocked him quite a bit. I'm excited that he's out. I can't wait to see him. Somebody else wrote me and they're like, hey, do you know this guy, don't you? And I was like, yeah. And he said, hey, man, he doesn't seem all right. He's really he's really going after a lot of other comics. And I'm like, that is That's literally Andy. his mana. That's yeah. the only way he can survive, Andy, is he has to always have enemies. And then afterwards, he goes, I don't know why I did that. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he attacks then he uh, and then he attacks himself and that yeah. and then he takes a nap. Someone said someone someone said that Andy Kindler painted himself onto a cross. <laughs> and I was like that kind of describes it. Painted. Which is funny for a Jew. 
<laughs> Jewish? Did I mention? What's wrong? What's wrong, folks? What's wrong? What's wrong? I saw one time. He, you know, he's always pretending to be bombing, if not bombing. Right. But that's the that's the game. That's the game. And so he one time at a show, he was like, "Folks, I understand I've lost you humor wise, but is there some other arrangement we can come to?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm on his show also. Oh, awesome. What show is that? Friday, uh, Andy Kindler's particular show uh, at the hideout. Ooh, uh, that's going to be great. Uh, yeah. uh, the Parker Jazz Club. I don't know if you've been in there yet. And uh, uh, Yes, I did it last time I was at Bridgetown. It was great. Uh, and I was I played it, loved it, and I was like, gosh, I wish I had played this room before. But uh, Okay, it's uh, got this nice low ceiling. Yes, and it's kind of blue. Yeah, and you go down into it. And, um, As you should. I, we were talking to another comic recently who said... It, anytime you have to go down into a comedy club, it's already a better experience. Mm -hmm. Something about the act of walking into mm -hmm. a basement where there might be a knife makes you feel like this is this is where we need to be right now. This feels good. It's in the bones. It's in the it's in the if, if you have to, if you go upstairs to a comedy club, you're like, what? What is this? There's we're too close to the pigeons. Uh, I, I was in a comedy club not too long ago where they had uh, not only did they have windows, but they had curtains, and the curtains were open, and it was an earlier show, and Daytime. so day, day, daylight was streaming in, and I was like, <laughs> should we take the moniker comedy club? Off of the building altogether because something tells me you don't know how to mm -hmm. run what, what what you're doing here. Yeah, it's more like a daytime jamboree at that point. I uh, yeah, I'll give that to you okay. because it's not. You should not have. I don't want to see anyone or anyone else if I'm laughing for some reason. It, it's something that should be done in the, sex and comedy should be done in the dark, and you should leave feeling a little like oh, it was, I mean, it was enjoyable, but also ooh, some of that didn't feel right. I've done those July shows. <laughs> I've done, I mean, most people know better than to start a show at 7 p.m. in July. But, right. you know, occasionally you have an eight, even an 8 p.m. show in July where the, it's the evil sun. It's the evil mm. through the window sun yeah. that's hitting the stage. And everyone's like, the audience has the energy of like, I think there's something I still have to do in my work day. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get an oil change we before they close. Yeah, exactly. We got to run one track. We're coming right back. Uh, James Domian is here. And uh, James, where can people follow you online? Instagram at Jay Adomian, J A D O M I A N. Uh, give us 60 seconds while Bob Fontex. Bob wow. Fontexa. Yeah, I we've just only called worked you Bob together for like 20 years. I mean, come on. Bob's going to float a spot, well, and uh, James Adomian is at Moon Tower County. You, you can check the lists and the lineups of everybody, and you can see all the schedules. Everyone's going to be appearing multiple times, but we want to encourage you to go see James Adomian's full one hour set. It's, I want to uh, go. Will you send a car, James? I'd love to go. It's not just funny. I mean this as the compliment, even though it's going to sound backhanded, probably. It's also fun. But I mean that, bitch, because I, 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 there's a standard people have been taught of stand-up. Netflix specials and stuff like that that they've been taught. Like, this is what stand-up looks yeah. like. It's just this one way. But there's a more authentic form of comedy that would never get on TV. Correct. That, and, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's free form. It's free form. It's distressed fabric. Uh, it's stonewashed. Yes, there you go. Uh, it's 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 uh, it's of the streets. It's filled with idiocy. It's uh, it's it's idiotic. Yes, it's and a but there's a whole especially you get in places like L.A. or New York where you have large scenes of uh, actors, improvisers, stand ups, all that, and then you had these shows where it all kind of gets mixed together, and everyone's trying to get their funniest friends to also laugh. And when you get to see that, you get to see some pretty amazing stuff. Then then uh, executives get a hold of stuff and they say, Hey, look. The average guy is not going to quite understand where this is coming from. And then they try to strip some of the, the gorgeousness out. Is that the, 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 the five below of comedy? Is that the five below of comedy? the five below of comedy? Is that what like, you're talking about? <laughs> Look, I'm an executive. I don't know what's good. I know what I like. I don't know what I like, but I know what's good. I, know what, I don't know anything. I just know what the people want. The people want whatever we give to them. Wow. You should really start buying up all the comedy clubs in the I, nation. I look. You would believe. You would look. You would look at the house I own. You would look at the career I've had as an executive of television. You'd say this guy doesn't know anything, and you're right because you know what? I represent other idiots. America's stupid, and so am I. <laughs> Congratulations! By the way, uh, that was a spot-on impression of everyone who owns the industry. Of, of the of, of everyone who owns uh, uh, Odyssey, iHeart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Bob. It's probably Ted Turner, too. I don't know. Yeah. One of a little big, bit of Trump in there, I yeah. know, too. Like with the 
Bob, the other night uh, we were at an event, and that one of the heads of Odyssey, one of the largest radio groups in the in the U.S., suited up. Somebody's in a whole suit. Somebody suited introduces up. us and goes, "Hey, this is uh, these are this is Matt and, and Bob. They're over at KLBJ." And he goes, "Oh, I'm Williamson Carlisle, or whatever he said." And Chief Bob goes, President. and Bob shakes his hand and looks him in the eye and goes. How you doing? We're number one. <laughs> wow. Not under contract. <laughs> just, just like the nice. piss them off. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, no, that's a good thing. That's, that's good. That that's was a good a, thing. We that got... was a genuine yeah. F yeah, and so you're allowed that, that one. That happy. doesn't cause a problem at all. Uh, you said you had some background. You like radio, and you, you brought up Phil Hendry, who we happen to be huge fans of. Oh, I and, love Phil Hendry. And uh, Sometimes he'll come down from his uh, coastal home and, and do something with me. Oh, and, really? Like, Comedy-wise, yeah. Oh, my God. That's got to be amazing to do stuff with Phil. Uh, he's so... He, I grew up listening to him in high school and college. You and, know. and for someone who's younger doesn't know, Phil Hendry not only did shows, and he sometimes do like overnights in places where he was uh, syndicated, but he did all the characters. That he, he, he interviewed yeah. himself. He interviewed like, himself all the time. Is yeah. incredible. Phil Henry, Phil Henry show. This hour we have, we're joined, and he would have another character he was played. So he would basically, he would play himself, and then on the phone, it would be like, Yeah, Phil, what we're going to talk about, Phil, this hour is the cats. The cats are starting to have sex with each other in the street. People thought it was real. People thought it was real, yeah. They thought it was real. It was amazing. But I've, had, amazing. I, I've, I've always had this, this love of radio, like as a fan and kind of imitating people like that when yeah. I was younger and stuff. And I, uh, I, I mean, I used to, I lived, used to listen to all the LA radio stations, and it, you, you were. You were saying off the mic, you know, it's it's not just Austin, but a lot of cities where the radio business is like slowly uh, collapsing on itself. Uh, implosion is the word. Implo- that I think but most people but use, like yeah. slowly. Yeah. And it, I, I, the radio business in L.A. is a lot smaller than it was when I was a kid. I bet. It's still there. There's still a rich history, but it's like it's not what it was in the late 90s, I guess. Right. And um, but I still have an appreciation for all all that you know, and so I have this I have this character I came up with. It's his, his name is Don Valley, Don and he's Valley. one of the, he's one of the overnight guys. And, you know the kind of guys that you hear when you're up too late, mm-hmm. and uh, you're hearing the loving, caring hands of Don Valley overnights, overnights. midnight to five a.m. here. <clears throat> Kill will be Jay. I'm, here, one second. What's I'm he Don on? Valley. Will you over? Will you overdrive him? No. Here we're gonna give you the uh, now you're gonna, well, now you'll hear it for sure. Yeah, but, yeah. We'll give you the heavy overdrive. Yeah, uh, you're listening to Don Valley, overnight midnight to five a.m. here on KLBJ Free Form Radio, uh, an extinct art form almost. You were just hearing, of course, uh, Steely Dan, and before that, what else could it possibly have been? Besides more Steely Dan. <laughs> Let me tell you something about the overnight time slot. People can't quite go to bed. I try to make it just boring enough that they might be able to. Yeah, but they can't stay up either. That's what overnight radio is, ladies and gentlemen. Somewhere in the world between midnight and 5 a.m. I just want to explain the overnight time slot, and that's mostly what I do here overnight. <laughs> just a continuation. 74 in the valleys. 22 on the wet lakeside. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get that temperature in, man. Uh, yeah, you have smooth sailing on I-25. I uh, uh, traffic backed up on I-26 all the way to the south side. We'll be back after this. We have no sponsors. We're back, folks. <laughs> it's overnight radio. There's nothing but me and a whole snack of Steely Dan here in the Don Valley experience. Voted number one by 1977 Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Quite enjoyable. Yeah, I, I just that's that's what I'm. I'm just trying to set him up because eventually I'm just going to start doing Don Valley and get a radio show somewhere. You should. Yeah, the Don Valley Experience. Don I, Valley is also very good name for uh, a radio host. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is there a Y at the end of that, or is it just V A like ah! Frankie Valley? Is it like how the, do you? Good question. Uh, the funny thing is, I actually changed the spelling for radio. Oh, uh, rich, yeah. originally it was it was spelled by like, as the geographical topo- topographical feature, right? V A L L E Y. But we decided for radio we were going to drop the E. It's just John Don Valley, and it's two Y's. Don Valley, and Don is actually spelled. Don is spelled like the comeuppance of the sun. D A W N. Don Valley. What did? 
But Bob, didn't they have what was? Didn't they have a name they wanted you to use at some point? No, I was using the name Bob Fontaine. Bob, the always insane, always insane, almost almost insane, insane Bob, Bob Fontaine. Fontaine. Yeah. Oh, it's got to rhyme. Yeah, I felt like I gotta. You gotta have that Vegas feel. Like Don Fontaine yeah. or Bob Fontaine. You're stuck in the like alley Bob. with yeah. Big Don Valley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Sound over I some music. I, I feel I, like it would sound good over some music. I, I, I see Donald Fagan on yeah. that Nightfly yeah. album cover. Yeah, let, let him ramp a song. Uh, you know what I always like? Yeah. Okay. And give me shelter here. You're listening to KLBJ. The Rolling Stones are going to be in town at the stadium. Two weeks from now, we're going to be giving away tickets. We already gave away the tickets, folks. <laughs> if you got extra tickets to the Rolling Stones, we'll take them because we got to turn over some tickets. 22 on the east side, 55 on the west side. On the south, it's actually the north. Tune in uh, for more after this. Don Valley, we're overnights. We're midnight to 5 a.m. every night. Whether it's the Rolling Stones, Steely Dan, whether America's still a country or it's all become one subset of uh, Canada itself, folks. Let me tell you something. I saw the Rolling Stones one time, and I realized that was a band. And that was back when Brian Jones was a part of it. You're listening to KLBJ. I missed it. I missed it. Well, you, you could have. We could have flipped the screen around, and you could have seen the. Uh, we'll give you another one. I always right loved the, it. You want another song? No, I always love it when they just barely miss it. They just <laughs> call hitting the post, right? Yeah, we do it all the time. We hit. We miss post all the time. Hitting the post. Hey, I know you got somebody waiting. There. Can you stay for one more break with us? Are sure, no problem. Are you? Are you need to get? I mean, you probably have breakfast, or you got to get work out. I got to go for a walk. I'm gonna. I am gonna walk. I didn't sleep much last night. I'm gonna eat something, but why not? I had a little thing. Okay. I had a fight with your snack machine earlier, and I got one thing out of it. Did it, did it steal stuff from you? No, but it wouldn't take it, the cards. I had to. I had to put like old timey. Oh, yeah. It only ta- yeah, paper no. script. It it rec- it recognizes credit from comedians and goes. This is this is not good. This <laughs> is not going to work. This, musicians and comedians come in. Well, not now anyone from the sales department, boy, it'll take their card easily. In fact, it lends them credit. <laughs> it it goes, lends them credit. It goes last comic standing, 2010. Um, the bottom two rows are available, sir. <laughs> the gum. <laughs> it goes. It literally goes through your credits and then allows you to make purchases from there. Stick around. More James Adomian and more Moon Tower all week long. Mornings with Matt and Bob, powered by Chewy. We are excited. It's our favorite time of year. I know, like on the big music stations or wherever, they get excited for ACL Fest, the music thing, South by Southwest. Mm-hmm. Um, this is our thing. And no disrespect to them, they're yeah, those things are fun for I guess for the right people. But uh, we love comedy, and um, Moon Tower is here, and it's changed over the last couple of years, and they fought their way through the vid, which was great. And now we have this ten day thing, and I get I do get excited for people, especially because I know. I know someone like the, you know, whatever the hot name of the minute is. Someone from a television show, whatever, come in and do, like like last week. There's a, I'm telling you, this is my favorite time. Is where you get to, there will be people who have been doing comedy for maybe just a couple of years mm-hmm. who have gotten a chance. No one's working harder than them. And they're in their six minutes. It's their only six minutes that they packed up and brought here. <laughs> and they're like, this is my, this is the beginning of my comedy career. And it might be. And, they might become a big star. And then you're also going to see names and then the other part is the drop-ins and because everyone's buddies and you see and you go hey oh you got a, a quick break come do one extra show come sit on my show and that is the fun stuff is the club shows and it's what it's my favorite part and uh james domain is going to be part of that you'll be able to catch him quite a few times uh we are recommending also parker jazz club tomorrow night 7 p.m the whole hour james domain a whole hour of uh of james and uh which is which is amazing no. You're going to love it. James doesn't like to spend an hour with James, but the rest of you will really enjoy. <laughs> I have to bring the rest of you into the room to even make it happen. <laughs> Anytime you're alone, it's a very loud room, isn't it? Yeah. I always prefer that there's an audience. You know, just witnesses so people believe what happened. You precocious kid? I guess I was, yeah. You know, get in a lot of trouble, maybe, or no? Sometimes I got in trouble. You know, I remember it was the first, the fall semester. I was always intelligent and quiet and well-behaved. Really? Yep. And then the second semester, spring, is when I was intelligent, bad, hung out with the bad kids, and then would, like, make everybody laugh. Okay, so you just, you needed to feel comfort in order to do yes, that. Yes, I had to warm up through the whole first half of the year. <laughs> so you went into a career where people instantly, strangers instantly go, I have decided to judge you right now. Had, and that is an odd chick. Yeah, and I'm always like, wait until spring. <laughs> <laughs> it's Spring is minute 10 for you, right? <laughs> Luckily, you found me here in mid-April. 
Here we are. <laughs> it should be Austin, Texas. Uh, a good time for everybody. Um, I I don't want to turn you into a jukebox. That's not what we like to do here. We like to just sit around BS. Life could be a dream if I could pick you up in paradise from above. Sure. But you did hint that you had been working on a Doritos commercial. Oh yes, no. I, this is because I love being in radio, and it reminds me of all the radio bits. Uh, I have I I, I I don't have a car, but I I keep thinking about buying a car, and the algorithm pounces on you as soon as you think about buying something you get ads for it relentlessly right. Right. And, yep. and i'm like i'm like i'm not even typing it into a computer how do you know and they're like you listen to led zeppelin that means you're 44 years old you're gay you live in los angeles and you're thinking about buying a car <laughs> <laughs> and so i get the ads I, but here's the thing they know how old i am and they, they know what i'm interested in the algorithm but they think I have more money than I do. Right. So I get ads for expensive things that I can't really buy. And uh, <laughs> my lifestyle is more junk food, late night, broken. And so that's what I what I fantasize about is an ad that makes me feel seen where it's classy, like a junk food. Uh, excuse me, like a, like a luxury car commercial. Right. But, but it's, it's for, for you. Said Doritos, exactly. It's for you. So you'd ha- it would sound like... Introducing the all-new Doritos D25i, a luxury snacking experience unlike any other in the impulse aisle. (laughs) Crafted with bespoke spices, xanthan gum sourced in the Alps Mountains, and a sodium salt power of 150% of your recommended daily allowance. With a surprisingly crunchy exterior and a sassy, vitamin-rich interior, the Doritos D25i will have you wondering what's possible in a luxury snacking chip experience. Drop into your Travis County Dorito dealer for a test taste today. Made Chewy hungry. Yeah, I am hungry. That's good. Not available in all 50 states. No. do you have you don't have roommates? No, no, uh, no, not any, not that I know of. Is that a good? That's not a good answer. It is actually. I like <laughs> it. Not that I know of. Not that I know. Because <laughs> it, it's is there a lot of silent moments? Are there a lot of silent moments? You in your place, just doing, just working this stuff out, or do you work it out inside of your head only? Uh, no, yeah, my I do live I live alone uh, in, unless someone's visiting me or whatever. But uh, I, uh, and you, you know we have our overnight guests and so forth. Oh yes, you and know the life of a, a single bachelor in Los Angeles County. Of course, we do have our uh, little dalliances and so forth. <laughs> um, hi as well. Here we go. Hello, folks. Um, I think apparently here th- you should take this as a compliment. You're apparently big enough that the digital department has sent Lucas down to get a photo. Is that what happened? Uh-oh. They say, oh, will you please go get a photo? Uh oh. Can we take a photo of you? Yeah, sure. Right in in pro in progress. I guess with the cans on and everything. Yeah, um, yeah, Lucas. Sometimes you can wait just a second. <laughs> I'm very qui- I'm very quiet throughout the day. Yeah. I just I, I I'm not on all the time. I like listen. I do a lot of listening. And I'm just thinking and quiet and like you know when I say thinking, it's like just uh, you know the pits of depression and so forth. How's that going for you? Great. It's fine. I'm used to it. You yeah. Know? And. Um, but then once in a while, there I just there's a burst, and I, it'll be I don't know if I can say this uh, on the radio, but I, I don't know what I don't know what the rules are. But I'm like uh, I, I'm just by myself quietly, and then God damn it, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> just bursting out from nowhere. And it's just because I dropped some food on the floor, right. or whatever. You know, that's how I live my life: quiet, 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 outburst. That's, do, you, do you know Martha Kelly? Yes, so, so she's so, and she lives down here again, right? No, she's back in L.A. Now. Okay, and she, but oh, she's been back and one. forth, and it's a, yeah, she's, but she has a great line where she, she, it's, it's a tagline for depression. Uh, depression. It's never too early to go back to bed, and uh, which I think is a really, a really wonderful way to look at life. Sometimes and, I, uh, I love her. Oh, you, yeah, it's so great. You can't really beat the space. <laughs> the, the, the ridiculous thing about her is that, so. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't want to talk about another comic, but I was. No, I love her. I was going through the other day. My wife was going through for a thing for us to watch, you know, like Netflix or whatever. Mm -hmm. And she's just ping, ping, ping. You know how quickly you'll go through looking for something. And I go, oh, is is Martha in an animated series? And it was just a picture of a person in a bed and a drawing of a person in a bed. And she goes, how would you know that from that? I said, that is a drawing of Martha Kelly. Like the. 
the hopelessness in the shoulders of that mm. animated very that that's Martha <laughs> Kelly and she goes and she we goes back and we have the name of it and I look it up on IMDb and sure enough it's a Martha Kelly uh, vehicle wow. and I'm like wow is that uh, that's out now that show where is it out already yeah, where's the end of the world I don't even know. We didn't, we didn't even end see. up watching it. I don't want to. Uh, last thing I want to do is to deal with Martha's depression. My God, I'm trying to fall asleep. Uh, it's, I think it's. I think the premise of the show is that it's the end of the world, and everybody's wondering like, how are we going to spend the last six months of life on Earth? And then it's and then it's from her point of view as like. So uh, basically, it's just the Martha Kelly story. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 uh, okay. We got hey James Adomian. Uh, you can find him online. You can see more of his great work, and we encourage you to go see him. Uh, we know a lot of you are going down to Moon Tower. We insist upon it. Now, some of you uh, are probably looking at getting uh, the twenty dollars ticket to come see our, our podcast on uh, on Saturday. That's great. It takes so much little extra money. You get a club pass. You get to go see all the shows over the next couple of nights, and I'm telling you, it's highly worth it. And I know what happens with some of you. Uh, Instagram or whatever has ta- taught you the most important thing in the world is is celebrity. I'm telling you right now, the best shows you're going to see are going to these club shows, bouncing from place to place. Just tr- just trust, trust, trust the nice people that at Moon Tower that they've brought in good, talented people. And even if you don't recognize names, go see them. Go take chances all, on these comics because that's where you're going to see some of the really really fun stuff. Uh, James, thank you for giving us time this morning. Anytime Thanks, you're back man. in Austin, will you please come hang out with us? You're absolutely. Great. You're great. Love it, guys. Uh, James Adomian, just want an absolute, absolute delight. Um, we'll get right back uh-huh. in. Yeah, right. mornings with Matt and Bob, powered by Chewy. What fun with James. Instantly remembered him when he came in. Yeah. Uh, frenetic. Yeah, so much fun. So much fun. Oh man, I got a di- I got a real uh, dilemma here. Why do you have a dilemma? I got a kind of a dilemma. Why do you have a dilemma? So, say say I have a dilemma again. I have a dilemma. Why do you have a dilemma? It's not a dilemma. I mean, we're gonna do it. My wife and I are gonna do it. And I'm more worried about her than I'm worried about me. Okay. But you know, my was this gonna be sex? You know, talk? our film star friend. Oh yes. Oh. Has, has got a movie out. She's doing press for it right now. I Are we allowed to call the show? Are we allowed? I don't to... think. I don't think of radio when I'm. It's really bizarre how you have a someone who's literally a Hollywood starlet, mm-hmm. and you don't say, "Oh, you're doing press. Why don't you call in and do an interview with us?" So, <laughs> she's got a new movie called. It's are called you, Abigail, right? Are you going to mention her name? Or is, do you, are you trying to keep it secret? How do we know which movie it is? Who, who do I look for? It's the star of Abigail. It's it's a horror movie. Let he still won't say that. Here's Abigail the weird is. thing. He's like, oh, I want to be private because it's my it's my neighbor. And what I don't get about was is when you say you um, I want to be private. She's literally you gave all the information I would need to find her name. Oh, Alicia Ware. Oh, yeah, it's Alicia Ware. Is that who it is? No. Oh, then it's Catherine Newton. Anyway, so no. you, you and Catherine Newton, you're talking the other day, right? And Kathy, you call her. She goes, we're all going to go to the movie. We're going to go see the movie on Friday. Like, I'm buying the tickets, and we're all going to go see my movie on Friday night. Buy the tickets? Yeah. Like, the the, the studio now can't here's the get, deal. The studio can't get the star of the movie into the movie? I'll help Catherine out if she needs help. No, she likes, she's very down to earth, and it's like she's going to pay for a ticket because it all goes to the bottom line. I mean, it, that makes sense. Right? Yeah. It makes sense. You're promoting your own thing. I don't ever see you paying for radio. Well, because I can't. Anyway, what... I guess she doesn't know... Uh, we haven't been really vocal, because she's in this genre a lot. And she hasn't even told you her name. But. I know, that's the weird <laughs> thing about it. She's in this horror genre a lot. My wife and I do not enjoy horror films. Unlike a Cara Bearden. Y'all think y'all are better than other people that like horror films? No, I don't think it's a, a, a question of being better or not. We, we get terrified. You get terrified. Yeah, I get scared. Even though I went to film school and I know it's all fake blood and fake... What are you scared of? I don't like jump scares, Chewy. Oh, okay. Okay, we'll say that. I don't like jump scares. I know it's coming. The soundtrack... Because I'm, you know, been in movies. I know how it works. Yeah. It gets, starts getting... And when I know the sound starts getting more quiet and quiet, they do this very subtly. They bring down the volume of the... Of the movie. hmm You know? Yeah. You don't notice it because you, you don't know... Three things he hates. EDM music. Mm-hmm. Jump scares. Yeah. Knowing the names of his neighbors. Wow. 
and, and, and this Indian movie food and this movie market. looks terrifying. And she's going, no, 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 no. It's it's funny and terrifying. And I go, if it's funny and terrifying, you need to fire the uh, marketing department because there's nothing mo- about no. this movie that looks funny to me. Yeah, all horror movies, it, there's nowadays, relief. there's well, there's an over the topness about them too because not. I mean, to me, an actual horror movie would be a movie about you only have like. Nine minutes left to get your taxes filed, and your tire oh, was blown. Yeah. Pregnancy and, uh, look, scare. Yeah, those are oh, re- actual God. things that scare me. Um, vampires don't because I don't believe in them. Right? Yeah. There are two things I don't believe in: vampires and myself. I can't even watch the preview to this thing. I get scared. Damn. It's called Abigail. Little girl that tried to keep her in a cage. She gets out of the cage, starts killing people. What? That's what it's about? A little bit. Why would you put a little girl in a cage? Why would you? Why would you put baby in a corner? There's a lot of things that happen that that are are cruel. I got scared watching Roadhouse. I don't like these kind of movies. I like rom... I I, I told her the other day, I said, when are you going to do a rom-com? Do you know if Bob lived next door to Jake Gyllenhaal, he A, wouldn't tell us his name, and B, would say, oh, it's one of the... It's the star of Roadhouse, but I can't say his name. Why can't you say her name again? She told me not to. She said, please, when you promote my movie... She said, don't look don't at me. Don't say... Don't look me in the eyes. My name. Don't look I, at me in the eyes. I'm a movie star that's in a movie, and I'm promoting a movie. Can I... But sug- don't say my name. Can I suggest why I think he won't say her name? Why? Because Bob is half Latino, right? Okay. Oh, but he can't I, say it. I think he can't roll his R's, he and I think he doesn't it. want to say her name because he knows that we'll give him a hard time about the fact that he can't, that, that he can't roll his R's. I think all of his other friends will ask to be friends with her, uh, and he wants to be the only one that's special in that neighborhood that has a man. relationship. I think no, I don't know. Part of this kind no, of, she's very outgoing. But listen, I think you just I think you just nailed it. How embarrassing uh, is it going to be to sit next to a person at? her movie and look at it through my fingers because this is how i watch a horror movie like this like this like so i can close my can i say how happy it makes me to know that when you go into a dark theater your fingers are up there yeah well (laughs) and my wife's even worse my wife screams during scary movies she screams so there's things in cinematic history that are scary like horror movies i've seen the exorcist yeah i've seen the exorcist Texas chainsaw massacre Never saw that, and I was friends with I was good friends with Ed Neal. But oh, I you'll give us his name, you'll give us Ed Neal's name, but you won't give us your with, other friend's name. I was name. good friends with the hitchhiker of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So once Melissa breaks up, with and you. I know exactly where that movie was shot in Round Rock. I know every time I it's a hotel on a hill now, but I know that hill where the truck was barreling down. Poltergeist. Have you seen Poltergeist? Yeah, I, I saw them all. I saw Gremlins. Every time I, I go to the toilet these days, the I omen, see The Omen was scary. The original Omen. Do you have an Omen? Yeah. you <laughs> going to go to the bathroom later? Oh, man. Am I? So ever. I don't, you know, it's, uh, we're going to do it. We're committed. The tickets have been bought, but I wouldn't see this movie otherwise. At home or in the theater. I'm terrified. Should I get high before I go in? That'll make it even worse. You want tips from the listeners? Yeah. All right. Halt. Halt. Who goes there? Yo, hey. This is Cody. I'm trying to help out Bob with the scary movie thing. Help yeah. Why well, can I get up? Are you a scary it? cat? No. Uh, yes. Yes. Also a scary cat, Bob. I'm with you here, bro. So look, what you got to do is you don't look right at the focal point of the scene, right? You kind of look in the back. Dude, I've done way, this before. I've tried to here. blur my eyes or look at the corner of the screen. No, no. you don't got to do any tricks. Just don't look at the main character. Watch the background. Watch the doorway. Just kind of avert your eyes from whatever they're trying to get you to look at. You yeah. already know it's coming with the music since you're so studied up. Yeah, you know no, I mean? they bring the sound level really low on everything. Right, it's right, gradual like so you don't so, notice yeah. the then Boom. And then jump yeah, scare. You can't scare get scared you, you next know? to a hot woman. That's hey, the main thing. Yeah. And my wife's gonna dig her claws. She can yeah. dig her talons into my arm during the whole movie. You, I know it. You I are like you are gonna give off a lot of beta cuck vibes at the. Uh... You can't look scared. Are you familiar with beta cucks? Yeah, no. Do you, do, you, do you spend any time on Twitter? Uh uh-uh. uh. You ever watch Andrew Tate? That scares me yeah, too. Twitter. You ever watch Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate. X scares me too. 
What's yeah, that? What is some about, new thing I would, that some I would new th- just that? Okay, I appreciate. With, uh, Thanks with for being eyes. on my side. Thanks, Hulk. Yeah, I got you, bro. I got you. There's some new. Hey, th- is that a Harry Carey voice you do for uh, rock and roll news? I'm curious. Yeah, you know, I get a little Harry Carey. You know, I, yeah, I'll get a guy. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I mean, yeah. no more like more Bob Euchre when I'm doing it. No. You remember Bob Euchre? Yeah, no. it's not Bob Euchre. It's I more Harry Carey. Yes, yes. I just wanted to make that. Thank you, man. Thank you. First of all, it's just me. Okay. <laughs> uh, how long? How many minutes is this movie? I'm looking. I'm actually looking to see how many minutes Our it is. Aren't long. This one's 149. Yeah, that's the same length as Civil War. No, 149. That's more than two hours for a horror movie. No, an hour and 49. Right? Or, 100, at, or 149? It's, it's ten. It's ten minutes short of. Uh, Wait a minute. Did you say 149? One hour, no, one hour 40 mi- 49 minutes. I thought you minutes. said 149 minutes. One hour 50 minutes. Let me read the, let me read the oh, synopsis. Still a pretty uh, good chunk. It's out this week. Uh, here we go. Where's the synopsis? Abigail has its world premiere. No. What? Uh, you, you're right. You know more about it than I do. Sure. Do you want to watch the trailer? No. Oh, Why not? She's in there with Gus from, from Breaking Bad? Yeah. Yeah. Damn, She's also bro. in there. Oh, who's the gentleman that passed away from uh, Euphoria? Angus Cloud, rest in peace. Angus Cloud guy, is man. in there as well. I liked Angus. Yeah, man. it's a really. It's it's got a good cast. Looks no, really good. Bob's gonna go and not watch it. It's by some of the people she did scream, scream with. This oh, tonight wait. or tomorrow night? A Friday night. If you want to go, I'll tell you. I'll let you know when we're gonna be there, and you. I'll get you a ticket or whatever if you want to go. I'll I had no know. idea that Catherine Newton was in the Scream franchise. Was she? <laughs> Bob, oh, I see what you're doing. Play I along with this. Doing. I saw what you're doing. Uh, Chewy, your favorite actress is not in this. Who's that? You know who? I don't know. Oh, no. Who? Sid- Alexis Texas? Sydney Sweeney is, <laughs> yeah. is doing her own thing, and she she's being a great actress. What's the name of the movie again? On her own merit. Abigail. Abigail. I don't want to see the thing, man. I'm telling you, I, maybe I want to watch the trailer. Have you ever thought about that? Do you ever think about that? Your wife loves these kind of movies, she loves right? This kind of, Why? She what loves you, this kind what? of stuff. I don't. She thinks it's the only thing I that know makes life worth living. It's like a roller coaster. Bad horror home. movies I don't in be, 90s country. It's all she cares about. Life is a roller coaster. I don't need more roller coaster. No, life is a highway. Life is but a dream. I don't need. And, and if you say anything to her about what I've said today, I will. Say anything what to my wife? No, I told my you, wife last night. I said there might be an opportunity for you to go to this movie. Not right, only go to the movie, but I think that the star of the movie is going to be there. Bob, Bob's not sure if he wants to go or not because Bob is afraid of horror films. Right, and she said that's in her Wisconsin accent. She said that tracks. She said she. Uh, she goes. I, he's always seemed like a bit of a puss to me. Maybe she still wants. Okay, look. Please let me out. See a little girl in the cage. Wants to be out. Why is she in a cage? Pretending to be a little girl. Answer. Quick question. Who's inside a cage right now? Bob doesn't like the movie. You Bob jump. jumped in his seat and, and he's he's watching a trailer. Well, she's not going to be yeah, your friend anymore. She looks good in this. If you get scared, they're not going to be your friend anymore. Bob, bro. I don't know if you know this about your neighbor, but when you get to that level of good looking, you're going to look good in anything. She oh, no. is what some people in the business call a smoke show. I think, yeah, that's why she. There's nothing. There's. Yeah. No, she said it's it's a it's a and she put comedy in front of horror. She said it's a comedy horror. Yes, and I go. That's fa- that's flagrant false advertising. No. I think what she means I by that is I see nothing but horror. Like horror, everyone horror. in the theater of this horror movie will be laughing at you. Comedy horror. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that works. Oh my god! Go see this movie. When is it open? To the nineteenth. When's that? That's Friday night. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. We're gonna see it opening night. We're gonna walk the red carpet. Damn, There's not gonna you, be a red are y'all carpet. gonna eat before or after? I'm not eating after. You're not eating. And I'm afraid to eat. Are you going to invite me to go eat, or are you just going to invite me to the movie? And why is everything going to be about food with you? Because I know y'all him? are going to eat. Have you met him before? And you didn't invite me to that. You invited me to just the movie. So you're telling me nobody's going to eat I'll buy you snack. I'll buy movie. you the pickle. And I the, can buy the snack. I'll buy you a pickle and some popcorn. I just want to know if this is an empty invitation. Can I say something to I you? I can't even you eat You don't pop- want to go to dinner with them. You're going to be uncomfortable the entire time. First of all, you don't have any clothes to wear in front of Hollywood, okay, at all. What are you going to do? 
You're going to wear a gimme shirt from some other movie no, that you got from promo department? She came to our premiere of our movie. I might wear the shirt of the movie that's Remember, on. You were Remember, you, you were there, right? Yeah. We were all sitting together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She came to our premiere. Of, so you uh, met her already? Yeah, yeah. You think you got Riz with her? No, she gave me some change. She didn't know who I was. She said, there you go. <laughs> Have a good <laughs> What day. does that mean? <laughs> She, she wanted, to know. Know, I was she wanted to know how you got the name Chewy, and it was kind of embarrassing to say, oh, we're racist. Yeah. And I had to raise my hand. She goes, who gave you that name? And I was like, uh. You wanted the credit for guilty it. Guilty as yeah. charged. Wow. And she's like, that's not right. That ain't right at all. And did you say, well, I gave you the name Catherine, whatever it is, because <laughs> I don't want to put your name out there? You don't want her to become famous? So you don't want to spread her name around? I don't want to see. I, I. I want to go and I want to have a good time with my neighbors. And Bob's like, I don't want to give out her gonna, name because I don't want people then trying to drive by to see where she lives. And here's what he doesn't get. First of all, no one's going to do that because no one's going to drive out where you live. No one wants to go that far for anything. If you were saying, if you said something like, I'm going to put free money on my lawn, it would be there for days. No, it wouldn't. Your boys would take it. <laughs> I'm going to be uncomfortable. Uh, and you don't care. It got 79% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's good. A that's group of would-be criminals captures the 12-year-old daughter of a powerful underworld figure holding her for ransom in an isolated mansion. So right now it's based in reality. Their, sure. plan, st- <laughs> start- sure. their plan starts to unravel when they discover the young cat captive is actually a bloodthirsty vampire. Well, that that's a real backfire. Hmm. That's not what they were planning on. Hmm. I hope it's a big hit for her. But I wish she'd do a rom-com. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a rom-com for her. You should. You're going to write yourself and I'm gonna as go, the I'm love gonna interest? I'm going to knock on her door and I go, I've written a script. Who's going to be the love interest? I'm trying to get her to be on my YouTube channel, but she won't do it. Oh, what? She has really? A, well, yeah. you don't want to start at that level. Doesn't want to lower herself. Well, to... she has the worst sound system I've ever seen. So, I, like, I like, I'll do a. Re- let me do a, a review of your sound system, in your home, like Architectural Digest, and then she can and do then, a review of your IMDb. And then a couple <laughs> months later, I will bring you a new system. I'll reach out to manufacturers and I'll put. I'll get the a mega system for you. Hmm. It's one of your last opportunities to get uh, tickets to our uh, live show that's happening Saturday. And I would say do it. Saturday is April 20th, also known as 420. So naturally, we're having a show at 420. Most of you who listen know we're not a big Smokey Joe. Smoke weed every day. Smokey Joe show. Uh, you do not have to be into weed, weed. To, to get the humor of the show. You're chilling it just happens after. to be at 420, and we're going to be funny, and it'll be funny for you whether you're stoned or not. You can get a ticket. I believe it's 20 bucks, which is easy. That's easy. That's less than a cocktail in the city now. 20 bucks, uh, austintheater.org or Google Moon Tower Comedy if you prefer, if you forget the actual URL. It doesn't matter. You'll find your way there. We'd love to see you out there. Bob will be there. Uh, yeah, maybe somebody Bob knows will be there. I don't know. As a special guest. Don't I worry. Don't he know. won't say he knows you. I don't know. I can't say. Uh, Go nowhere. More KLBJ throughout the day.